Okay, I think we're live. Let me double check before we get going. Oh, I should hit record now while I think about it. And let's see. Make sure there's audio. Okay. Yep, hi. there we go. Okay, let's see there. Get everything straightened out here. Welcome. We are working in colored pencil tonight. And by we, I mean, I guess me and my computer you you guys may be working in colored pencil i don't know um let's see got everything good let's see okay so this picture the reference photo if you are a patron this was one of i think from last month um if you recently signed up i will be putting this over it'll be attached to the finished project so you guys will be able to draw along with that too um, otherwise, if you're not a patron, you could probably go over to Pixabay and look at Pelicans and probably find something that's usable. Okay, let's see. And now I just have to, I guess, get started. I, I'm working on Canson. This is their black conservation board. Now, black paper, um, one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're working on black paper, it can make things go really, really quickly, but you want to kind of choose your project knowing certain things aren't going to be as like bright and luminous luminescence and oh I'm like, i thought there was a scratch on here it's a line i drew okay that scared me um but anyway the colors because your colored pencils most of them are going to be somewhat translucent i mean even your opaque colors are still somewhat translucent and the white is going to show through that to an extent and you're going to build up based on that and you can if you're working on white paper you can make things brighter than you will ever be able to do on black paper so you are somewhat limited on black paper now on the flip side black paper if you're working with something like this that has a ton of darks it can save you so much time which is nice and it does give you a very cool look but you've also got to watch um I think it can be somewhat deceiving sometimes when you see people's work that they posted online. Your cameras, and I'm not saying that the artist is trying to deceive you, the cameras want to fix things and counter your contrast and brightness and all of that and make things appear to be brighter and more luminous than, luminous, I can't talk, than they actually are in person. When you see most work done in, on black paper in person, it's not quite the same as what you're seeing online. So that's, I mean, yes, that can be said to an extent about all paintings and drawings but it's even more so on black paper so just be aware of that going in it you are going to um, kind of counter how you layer your colors it's not quite the same as working on white paper and I make it sound like I don't like black paper I actually do I think it's a lot of fun to work on you just want to know those things going in so let's get started um Oh, thanks, Tamara. She said, hi, Lisa. I wanted to let you know I really love your new graphics on Instagram. Very cool and clever. Yeah, I've been having fun. I am now using um, Adobe Premiere Pro for editing, and they have these templates you can buy where other people made these really cool templates. So you get a license to use those in your work. Um, but yeah, that's I'm using a lot of these really cool templates over there. I am, I've been using that to practice to learn to edit with Premiere Pro, and it turned out it's a lot of fun. So I just keep doing it anyway, because yay, I love them. And I'm glad you like them. I'm having a lot of fun with those. Sedona, um, Sed Sedina, Sed Sedena, Sedina, I'm sorry. Uh, I can't pronounce names at all. Good to see you again. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. Um, caffe caffeinated and all. So let's grab some pencils. And I'm probably just going to use my exam. Oh, where's my other sharpener? I don't love these sharpeners. I think this one was dead. Let's see. I don't know. That one's okay. Maybe okay. Yeah, that one will work. The Exacto School Pro I have, I need to replace it because it just keeps breaking my pencils and that's usually a pretty good sign that there's something wrong with, I mean, it's breaking polychromos. Polychromos don't break. So it's it's that sharpener. Um, my last one was good. That one there's just something wrong with. So I think I need to replace that. So I may be hand sharpening things tonight. Okay, I'm going to start with grabbing a bunch of my oranges and... Maya said, thanks for the video on airbrushing. I learned a lot from them. What do you what do you do with used chemicals that are left after cleaning? Uh, used, the, used chem I'm not sure what you mean by used chemicals. I don't, I mean, I have cleaner, but I don't, it's used. 
I mean, it's like gone. It, there's nothing to do with it. I'm not sure how to answer that question because I don't have used cleaners left over or used chemicals, I should say, left over. Um, oh, if you mean like when I soak it in the cup, I just, that can, that's just like Windex. I mean, basically it's a different type of cleaner, but it would be the same as that. So that it shouldn't hurt anything. That just goes down the drain. Um, well, you can check with your local, um, authorities, I guess, depending on where you live, maybe you have different rules on what you're supposed to do with it. But here, I mean, those, they're not harsh. Am I using different pencils or just polychromos? Um, Trish asked. I'm using a combination. I have everything that I'm using. All the supplies are listed in the video description. Hopefully, if I remember them all. I'm using a combination of polychromos, luminance, and the Derwent Lightfast. I don't know if I'll get to the Derwent Lightfast too much today. The main reason I want to use theirs, they have a lot of grays, which I need a lot of on the Pelican, and um, darker greens and natural greens, which are, are going to be good for quite a bit of this. Let's see. I need a yellow now. I guess I could have gotten all of this set up before we started, huh? I just grabbed my pencils and... Turned on the camera. Oh, that looks like a good yellow. Now, the majority of the pencils that I'm reaching for for my base layer are the luminance because these are, being a wax base, they're going to be more opaque and going up against the black of the paper, that's going to be helpful. But when I need the sharper details, I'm probably going to switch over to my polychromos or sometimes it's just a color that I prefer. So I'll be going back and forth on that. Megan said, I bought Zestit for colored pencil blending, but it's specifically for parchment paper. Do you know if there's a difference between this and normal Zestit colored pencil blender? I've never used Zestit. I know a lot of people who do, so you may want to contact one of them, but um, I know it has a strong orange smell, which I'm not big on the strong smells, but um, yeah, I, I'm not going to be any help there because I've not used it myself. It should be about the same. I need to order some and try it just so that I know for sure, but I just haven't gotten to it. Donna said, hi, Lisa, looking forward to this and more acrylics too. Ah, I take that as a hint. I have some acrylics planned. Actually, I took, if you guys saw the reference photos that went up this month, I am so excited with how so many of them came out. And so, yeah, I'm, I sat there for hours trying to figure out which ones I was going to do in different mediums and a bunch of them acrylics. There were definitely some acrylics coming up. Let's see, Tamara said, okay, um, yeah, if you're asking me, anybody who's asking a question, if you ask it and it, you don't get the at La Cree Fine Art highlighted in orange, I will not see it. I usually don't read the, com the in-between comments because it ends up, it's like you guys chatting to amongst yourselves normally. So um, if you want me to, to respond, make sure you've got the at La Cree Fine Art. It has to highlight in orange or I will not see it. Not because I'm trying to ignore you and be a jerk. Okay, I've been accused of that. Um, oh, I need some grays and greens too. Ooh, this is a perfect one. I've got to make sure, especially around the eye, this is tiny. So I want to make sure these are nice and sharp. I'm going to need a black. I may switch to the Coombe Long Pointed Sharpener for the finer details. Now, another thing with the black paper to keep in mind, it's kind of dull. I mean, it's... You can see when you put the pencil over it, the pencil is going to be darker than the black of the paper. It's um, almost more like a dark, dark charcoal. It's not really black, black. And so if you want really black, you can go over it with your black pencil, which is a great way to go because you don't have to put as many layers with black as you would on a white paper to get it super dark. So um, it still saves you time, even if you do plan on putting dark on top of it. Let's see. Whoops. Oh, a bunch of questions here. Hold on one second. Let me scroll up. Um, uh, let's see. Do you find OMS doesn't blend well on black paper? Um, it, okay. What I think happens when you work on OMS with black paper, if it's not blending well, it's generally because you are not putting down as many layers. So one of the things that happens with black, uh, or with OMS, you can't talk with colored pencil and black paper is you have a tendency not to put the, the as much pigment down. OMS only works if there is a lot of pigment on that paper. Black paper, you can get away with not putting as much. And then you try to blend it and it doesn't work that well. It's because you don't have enough pigment on the paper. It's not that there's something inherently wrong with, like the paper doesn't like OMS. It's not that. I mean, there, it's possible to have a, a black paper that doesn't like OMS. I've actually not used this one, so we'll be testing this tonight. But the problem is just that you're not getting as many layers of colored pencils as you needed on white paper. That's why black paper works so fast. You don't need as many layers to have a very similar result. But then that means OMS is not going to work as well if you didn't put down as many layers. So that's probably what's happening for you there. Good question. 
Um, let's see, Maya said, what PSI do you use on your compressor? I tried 10 to 15, but it doesn't seem to spray right. On mine, I'm usually, well, it depends on what I'm doing. Fine detail, I'm usually like almost to where it's not, it doesn't even register. It's like a, like a zero. I mean, it can't obviously be zero, but it is low. So um, really, really low. But if I need it to spray out heavier, then it's going to, I'm gonna turn that up a bit. Thanks, Jen. You're so sweet. Yay, $2. Um, I get excited when it black brights up like that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, with the PSI, it's not as, I, I, 10 to 15 is higher than what I typically have, unless I'm doing like a big background with a bigger needle, with a smaller needle, like a two or a three, I'm usually really, really low. So you, you just have to play around with it to get the right balance there. Um, Trisha said, thank you for answering. I'm totally fangirling right now. Oh my gosh, you're too funny. Um, Steve said, I have a $100 CAD and, and I could get the 20 set of luminance or the Derwent Lightfast 24 set. Which one do you recommend for portraits and wildlife? I don't know if luminance is wax and light fast, um, is oil. Okay, so luminance, totally light fast. Let's see if I can work while I answer your question. Luminance is going to be totally light fast too, so there's no problem there. But um, luminance is gonna have more colors. Look at the colors right now, because I love both sets. And the, the light fast, the Derwent light fast to me doesn't feel like a true like oil, like a polychromos. It feels somewhere between oil and wax, which to me is a good thing. I like that. It's a really nice way to blend with. But right now there aren't a lot of colors available. And so there's a good chance, like there's certain, they don't have a true red in that set. They don't have a true blue. There are colors that aren't out just yet in the light fast set. So you might like the, the luminance right now. Um, I, that, my answer may totally change when more of come out with the Derwent Light Fast colors next year. But check what colors are available because that, that alone, I think, may really um, sway your opinion on which set you want to get right now. Because it's not like if you get 20 pencils of each, you're getting the same colors. You're not. It is going to be a totally different set. But I will say luminance traditionally have been my favorite for portraits, but I also think the Derwent Light Fast are going to be amazing for portraits too, because they have that waxier feel and the way that they blend. I'm pretty sure I'm going to love them. I just cannot wait till more colors come out. So um, I don't know how much that helps you. I hope it does. Carla said, hi, Lisa, I made it tonight. Um, yay, Carla. Carla sent me some, and I'll be, I'll have an Instagram story of this up. Probably I'm gonna mess with it tonight if I'm not too tired after the live stream. But she sent me a some pastel mat, so I will be testing that soon. I'm excited. It came in perfect condition. You packed that? I don't think I've ever seen paper packed so well. Dick Blick and Jerry's Art Drama could take a lesson from you. Um, thank you again. Megan said, I remember now you didn't like the smell of Zestit. Thank you. See, and I can't say I didn't don't like it. I've not smelled it. I just know if it has a strong orange smell, I'm probably not going to be in love with having it in my studio, which is weird because I like the smell of oil paint. I don't know. Don't try to make sense out of my, my I like this, don't like that. Um, hold on. I just scrolled too far. <laughs> Donna said that was a totally for acrylics. Glad you caught that. Yeah, it's earlier on in the live stream. I'm more likely to catch things by the end. I won't have any idea what anyone's talking about. Rich said, does Mona Lisa paint thinner blend a colored pencil and is it toxic? It is toxic. Um, but I mean, how, how toxic? It's not like a lot of people will freak out like it's going to murder you. It's, you know, don't, don't sit there sniffing it. Don't inhale it. Don't drink it. Although my friend Lena Dania has drank odorless mineral spirits and she lived. So, um, I mean, you, I, I still don't recommend it. Um, neither does she at this point, but anyway, it was an accident. You don't, she made a video out of that. If you want to go look it up, it was actually a really funny video, but you don't want to, um, you, you know, you, you want to use common sense and decide what's best for you. I can't tell you, oh, it's perfectly safe. I mean, it is, it's paint thinner and it's odorless. So you want it like mine always has the lid on it. When I'm not using it, I keep the lid on. Then I dip my brush in it. I use it. I put the lid right back on. I mean, I just use common sense like that. Now I'm prone to headaches like bad and odorless mineral spirits has never given me a headache, which kind of says something to me. Like, I mean, it's not, I'm okay with that. Um, it, it's not bugged me yet. So I mean, I, I'm not sure how much that helps you with, with that. It is toxic, but it doesn't, and it, you, you just have to make, make your own, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, basically. 
Um, Jenny said, I want to do the lion Patreon reference photo with a Rasta hat on. Oh, you sh totally should. His hair, his floppy hair is hilarious. That guy is so gorgeous, and I love his long floppy hair. Megan said, I've heard blenders stain tone papers. Okay, they can. It depends, and it depends on the paper. So, like, for me, um, I've had with Stonehenge, and I don't know with this one yet, but I've had with Stonehenge where I used way too much, and you could see almost an oil stain around it. Now, if you're putting color on top of it, that doesn't matter. It's going to get covered with the pencil. But if you wanted the background of the paper to show, to stay clean, what I do is make sure not to use too much. I don't load the paint thinner too heavy on the brush, and just stay over the area I'm, I'm blending. If you oversaturate that brush, and you get it everywhere, yeah, it can stain the paper, but it depends on the paper, because some I've had stained, some I've not. Um, but you don't want to, you know, if I'm only blending this area, don't put so much on the brush that it just spreads everywhere. Just keep it within that area. Use less. And um, I just dab it on a, a piece of Viva paper towel or you can use an old t-shirt. That'll work too. Um, Mitchy said, thank you so much about the OMS and black paper. You saved me. Um, Sherry said, have you tried the Fabriano black paper yet? I've not. I just got to pack but I haven't tried it. Looks like it's a lot blacker than any of the other papers I tried. Oh, I'm going to look into that for sure. Whoops, and I scrolled too far. Ah, one second, scrolling down. Oh, where did that go? Um, let's see, what are your thoughts of using Prismacolor after trying these other brands? Would you even try a small set if you haven't to if you haven't to have a comparison. I have Prismacolor. I mean, I, I, I don't have any reason to, to use Prismacolor at this point because I have all of these. Like I really don't see where there would be any benefit to me. Um, Prismacolor just, I don't enjoy, I mean, if I use my material, I wanna work with, with want to paint or draw. I just want my materials to do what they're supposed to do. I don't want to fight with how do I keep them from breaking. And I love when everyone comes to videos, uh, or I don't mean everybody, I mean, I don't know how people come to videos. Oh, you just need to do this to sharpen them. You just need to do that. You know what? I don't want to have to do handstands, turn sideways and like tilt my head to the side just to get my pencil not to break when I sharpen it. I should just be able to sharpen it. So Prismacolors are just not a fit for me. They may be for you. That's fine. They can produce beautiful artwork, but they're not a fit for me. And they also have a lot of light fast issues. So it's like you combine that with fact that they just you know I don't want to fight with whether or not they want to work for me that day that I, I don't see any benefit to using them at this point for, for me I mean and I understand why a lot of people would want them because they are lower cost that may be a good set to get you started with colored pencils and if that's what you know the set that you have go for it I would rather see you use that than nothing at all for sure but I don't have any reason myself to use them. I mean, I do them occasionally for comparison videos. I've got quite a few of them on this channel, but it's not something that I'm going to invest anymore. Like I'm not giving more money to them for products that they're not putting the effort into producing well that they like they used to. Um, let's see. Carla said, you're welcome. My husband helped me pack it. We were so worried it would get damaged. No, it was in perfect condition. And that you are as duct tape happy as I am. Did you know they make teal duct tape? Just saying. Um, let's see. Ellie said, hi, Lisa. I was just going to ask about pastel matte. I'm a beginner, but I always try hard things. I'm doing my first piece on pastel matte, and it's quite a challenge for me. At, come back and ask me again in a month or two when I finally get a chance to try the, the stuff that Carla just sent me. I haven't used it myself. Um, I've not even opened the pack. Like, I opened the box that came in, but I haven't, like, touched the paper yet or anything. Um, I've got to plan a project for that one. But that is not one I have any experience in yet. Maybe Carl, I can answer you because she's used it. Again, all the supplies I'm using are listed below in the video description. I see a few questions about that and I just scrolled too far. Dang it. Where did the questions go? There they are. When SG said, have you tried or will you try Chelsea Studio Fat Medium, Lean Medium, or Lavender Spike Oil? I have not heard of those. But if they're for oil paint, if you're talking about oil painting um, materials, which I'm guessing, I don't, probably not. I mean, I like the paints that, I can see myself trying different oil paints, but I love liquid. I, I don't see myself wanting to give up liquid anytime in the near future. Um, let's see. And things that have a lavender scent to them try to kill me. So I usually try to avoid, um, like the lavender, anything um, lavender, like paint thinner. There was one of those that was supposed to be this natural. Oh my gosh, my throat closed up. 
um, it was bad. Just because something says it's natural does not mean it's healthy. There are lots of natural unhealthy things in this world, but that one did not work out well for me. Um, so Auntie said, I think being headache prone has a lot to do with smells you like and do not possible. <laughs> I do not, um, I don't use perfumes as those give me migraines, but I love the smell of oil paints. Poss but see, I wonder if it's more than that because there's certain like, okay, Scentsy. There are certain Scentsy smells that I love, but they give me headaches. It's like there's this, all I, all I can describe it as is a high pitch floral undertone that smells kind of nice, but for some reason it gives me a headache and I can't use them. Whereas other ones that are more like, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's all, that's an interesting theory though. Um, Sarah makes art said, I've watched Lena's video about when she drank paint thinner. I think it's an example of why companies say if swallowed, contact a poison control center. Yeah, definitely. Um, Megan said, yes, that, that was a lot of information you wouldn't be able to put on the label. That's for sure. Whoops. And that scrolled too far. Dang it. Computer. Why must you do this? Actually, that's more of a thing with YouTube. Okay. Megan said, and all maybe odorless blenders can potentially be more dangerous given the lack of odor as a warning, depending on the brand. Yeah. And that's definitely true. I think that with the odorless mineral spirits, you have to just, again, common sense. I mean, just because you can't smell it, don't make, don't fall into kind of that, like, feeling of, oh, I can't smell it, so it's safe. It's not. You have to be more careful, and it's easy to think because you can't smell it. Because I used to see this all the time with my students in my classes. They just leave the lid off their paint thinner all the time, and I'm like, don't do put the lid on it. It's this. You don't want to keep breathing that in. I've... I mean, within the class, we, no one ever got sick or anything, but it's like you, you still want to use some common sense when it comes to that and know that you don't, you know, it's just not good for you. Okay, oh, I'm loving this paper right now. This is, the pe pencils are just gliding and, and blending on it so well. And I don't know if I would like it as much with white because I would have to put more layers, but you don't, and I think that's the thing. You don't end up feeling like you need to put as many layers. Like I was saying before with, with the white and so far, none of this needs to be blended right now. So it's kind of, if you want to avoid odorless mineral spirits altogether, you may want to use toned papers. And especially this one is so smooth. I don't feel the need for any, OMS doesn't have to go over any of this at this point, which is kind of nice. Um, Sedina, Sedena, that I am saying your name wrong and I apologize, said, the only times I've had issues with Prismacolors, if I use very thins, their soft cores last a super long time, really surprises me that you've had issues. Well, it's not just me. Most people have had issues with Prismacolors. They break. You look at them wrong, they break. Um, God, dear God, don't drop one on the floor. Yeah, it's all over then. And yeah, there are a million tricks on how you can fix them and all that. I don't want to do tricks with my art supplies. Like, this isn't a circus. I just want to paint or draw. So, and... I'll have people will comment like, well, I've never had problems. You may have just gotten a good batch. That's entirely possible because I've had good batches. I've had times where for whatever reason that day, everything went well. My cores were centered. Everything was good. And then I'll get another, you know, order some more. And they're in there just terrible in terrible condition. I used to get them at Aaron Brothers a lot. And you dig through and it's like almost every core was bent. And that's not the case. Good, a good pencil shouldn't have, you shouldn't have to wonder if you got a good batch or not. I should just be able to get some. And I mean, it would be one thing if it was here and there. Now you have to keep in mind too, the amount of pencils I went through. The average person is probably only going through and having to replace pencils maybe an eighth of the amount of time that I do, or I'm having to do it eight times more because I draw so much, because I've been using them for so many years. I've gone through more pencils. I've had, uh, I guess, a bit more, um, I mean, I, well, more experience with that. And it's just... No, I'm, I'm not doing it. So um, a lot of people, when they're like, oh, I've never had problems. Yeah, but you're on your first set. You got a good batch. I'm happy for you, but that's, that, that's um, really common. Let's see. Um, but if you look through, I mean, look on forums or whatever. It is very common. It is a common thing. It is not just a me thing. It is a normal, like a known Prismacolor thing. And then you'll have people say, well, no, they got better. No, again, you got a good batch, which is awesome. I'm glad you got a good batch. I wish they were all good batches, but um, let's see. Maya said, I love the blend of airbrush with colored pencil. I just need the airbrush not to clog. Yeah, do the trick. If you get the flow improver, use the right flow improver. Use, make sure you're cleaning your airbrush right and make sure that you're using the right kind of airbrush. Those three things will make all the difference in the world with it not clogging. But that was my ongoing fight too. Talk about fighting with materials. Oh my gosh. But it was because I wasn't taking care of my airbrush right. Of course it's going to clog when you took care of it the way I was. It was bad. I was an example for a very long time of how not to clean an airbrush. Well, because I wasn't cleaning it. Um, let's see. Terry said, hi Lisa, can you tell us how to get crisp lines? I find, 
I get a lot of ble bleeding. Um, I'm going to guess you mean for a colored pencil and sharpen your pencil. Just sharpen it and don't push as hard. I mean, if you push really hard, it's going to blend in with the one next to it. Do lighter layers in a really, really sharp pencil. Try that. I'd have to see a photo, honestly, to know for sure what's happening for you. It's kind of hard to go by just um, describing it like that. So you may want to post a, a photo in our art group or in the Colored Pencil podcast group. And some of us can look at it there and see if we can tell what's going on. But the crisp lines, um, now sometimes I push harder though. Maybe you're not pushing hard enough. That could be it too. I don't know without seeing for sure. I mean, I'm kind of, I would say I'm about at a medium stroke, stroke right now. Now the paper you're using will make a difference too. Some of the papers, if um, your paper is too rough, you're not gonna get a smooth line there if the paper has too much tooth. If the paper doesn't have enough tooth, you're not gonna get, you know, everything's gotta balance out. But if you post a photo somewhere where people can look at it, that you can probably get some advice that way. Steve said, all my drawing techniques have come from your videos and they've helped me so much. That's awesome. I'll be enjoy, uh, be joining your Patreon in a couple of days. I owe my drawings to you. That is so awesome. Thank you. Maya said, are you going to make any further videos on airbrush? Oh, definitely. Um, I want to do a beginning airbrush one for sure. And I'm going to have the fully edited airbrush one. I just had the one go up on Patreon, what, I guess, early this morning. But I'm going to do a fully edited one. Edited one edited. God, I can't say that. On YouTube. And then I'm going to be doing definitely more projects with it. Absolutely. Especially now with that new gun, having that two or point two needle is amazing. I love it. So I'm like so, so in love with that airbrush right now. Uh, let's see, whoops, scroll too far, way too far, oh my gosh, why did you do this to me again, YouTube? I'll have it in the right place that I go to move to answer and it shoots to the bottom and I've got to go back up to find who the last, where that last question was, oh my gosh, really far, there we go. Okay, I think I got it. Diane said, if you can, would you name the pencil color you were using as you put it on the Pelican? I recognize some of them. No. Honestly, I've got so many. If I have to sit and name it, that's what most of this live stream will be. And the same with Patreon. I'll have people go, well, I need to know the colors. No, you don't. If I'm using yellow, grab a yellow. It doesn't have to be the same. That sounds super mean. I'm, so I'm sorry. I don't mean to be mean. But th there's a reason for it. It doesn't help that much. Because I'm gonna, I switch so quickly. If I have to stop and read this, something that, let's say this whole painting would take me eight hours. If I have to stop and read my pencils every time I switch colors, it now just took 40 hours. I mean, it's that big of a difference. So no, um, it's, if I'm using a yellow, grab a yellow. It does not have to be the exact same. Don't worry about that. What you wanna worry about in your, your paintings and drawings are the values. How light are your lights? How dark are your darks? That matters. That's what's going to make your stuff look more realistic. You could use a completely different yellow than me. You can use completely, every single color could be a completely different one. As long as you're staying with the values, is it dark enough? Is it light enough? Your work's still gonna look the same. It's that that matters. Everyone puts too, gives too much credit to color. It's not the color. Finding the perfect color isn't what's gonna make your work look more realistic, assuming that's your goal. Your dark's dark enough, your light's light enough. That's what matters. But and half the time, I can't even see these. But um, yeah, I, that's I. There, it. I've been teaching for twenty years, and I promise you, me telling you exactly what color to use is not going to help you. It's the values you want to learn. Worrying too much about the colors; those are training wheels you want to take off. Just grab a yellow. If I'm using a yellow, grab a yellow and go for it. And if it doesn't look good, switch yellows. Um, but you don't want to, don't, don't put too much um, pressure on yourself. Like it has to be the right color. You can waste so much time trying to find the right color. And it's, it, it, that's not what's going to make the biggest difference for you. Clarence says, well, well, love is natural, but I won't be breathing its fumes anytime soon. Exactly. So Nana said a good idea with OMS and paint thinners to get a flip a flip cap jar, if that makes sense. All these glass ones with rubber seal and metal to help it seal it in there. Yeah, I like this. I mean, mine, it's a lock. What are these called? Lock and lock. Um, but this one has a rubber seal and it seals really well. But I mean, if I store this upside down, it will still leak out. Like I had my Gamsol um, with the, and any, any, not just Gamsol. This is going to be true of any paint thinner. Anything that you put it in, the rubbery lid thing will help it stay in. But once I remove the seal, once, if the seal's on, it's not going to leak. But when you remove the seal, I had this stored upside down because 
I'm dumb and wasn't paying attention. That that's how it ended up in my thing. It all slowly leaked out and evaporated. I mean, gone. It's empty. And there was at least half a bottle left in here. Um, once, it, if the seal's on, when you haven't opened it, it's not going to leak. But once you remove that seal, that will um, leak out. So you want to make, yeah, something with a rubber seal, like the, the lock and lock is what I'm using now. But anything like that is going to help. But you still want to keep it upright because they'll still leak. Let's see. Airbrush with travel said I can't take the odor of, no, wait, sorry, a brush, I didn't read that right, a brush with travel. Lindy said I can't take the odor of zested. It's one of those smells that creeps creeps up on me. If I start using it, it seems fine, but after an hour with the lid closed, it's overload. You know, and I feel the same with a lot of, um, of like terpenoid, a, lo a lot of paint thinners are like that. Like I couldn't even allow them, the only one, oh, somehow I... I do not have the same photo that I had up a minute ago. That is a different pelican. Um, I had the, why did that change? Um, in my classroom, I could only allow the Mona Lisa odorless mineral spirits or Gamsol were the only two we could have in there because it was just, you get a headache. And even if somebody had previously at home used a different paint thinner, those brushes, the smell, like their whole kit would just smell. It was bad. It was so bad. Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on mapped color mapped colored pencils are they suitable for beginners i've never heard of them so i have no idea heather said i miss the prism colors that were out in the 80s and 90s oh me too and i still have one and i can't bring myself to use it i just keep it because it's back when it was still good but um yeah me too um let's see sarah makes art said i was reading where somewhere someone made a mall kiosk told a woman that it was impossible to be allergic to anything in her product because it was all natural why doesn't that surprise me people get so sleazy when they're trying to sell something to somebody like it's i need a really dark like red hold on i have to find a color that is not the color um that'll probably work um, see, and I don't even read the colors myself going back to that. I just grab one. I'm like, yeah, that'll work. It's not that exact. It ha There'll be times where I'm like, okay, I need this specific brown. And I find another, I'm like, yeah, close enough. I'll use that one right now. Like you, I don't put, and most artists do not put that much, like, don't, don't give, um, the specific color so much control over you. Um, will I do another favorite art supply video? Probably. I need to. So D so Dina said, I've only had the breaking junk with very thins. The cores, soft cores must, must be batch based. I'm pretty light handed with mine. So that helps. I hold mine at the end, softly building up. Yep. Yeah, that'll help. Um, or if you sharpen them wrong, they break. I mean, they're, they're just not for me. I use them for years. So trust me when I say I have a lot of experience with them. Not for me. I got sick of having to do a fancy dance just to get them to work okay it scrolled way too far there we go um Leela said do you think prismas are oh do you think prismas are overly waxy I find them to be super waxy yes they are very very waxy and I don't necessarily dislike that about them that can make it a little bit more of a challenge for getting fine detail but I mean that can be a good thing especially if you're using them in combination with another pencil you can get like use your polychromos for the finer detail and then the waxier pencils your your prismacolors can be used for um like skin tones and getting that they can be wonderful for blending that so I'm not saying that they're all bad they have uses that are good and I've seen amazing work done with them I mean amazing so it it's just going to be personal preference um but for me no. But as far as them being too waxy, yes, they are very waxy. You get a lot of wax bloom with them. But I don't necessarily, like I wouldn't necessarily say that's that's what makes them bad. That's just the nature of the pencil. And the counter is that they blend so smoothly because of that. So yeah, there's pros and cons to it. But I think the pro of that, how they blend for like skin tones, I can definitely see where a lot of portrait artists would be like, this is a good, perfect fit for me. Uh, let's see. See. Also, do you guys use Pinterest? Do any of you use Pinterest? I have a Pinterest over there. If you are sick, like if you want to see artwork, but you're sick of social media and all of the political crap, you may like Pinterest. So I've got the board over there. I have a link in the video description if you want to follow me there. I've been posting everything from, you know, you may see pictures of other people's chickens or just random things I like, nail art, my artwork, all kinds of stuff over there. Thanks, Cersei's. 
Salou said, I am wanting to get into colored pencil more. So not counting the quality problems for now, would I be better using Prismas over Polychromos considering my background is in oil pastels? It's good. I mean, I'm going to always say polychromos because that is absolutely like for me, I almost like I was hardly ever drawing with colored pencil anymore because I was so sick of dealing with the breakage with with Prismacolors and wondering, OK, did I get a good batch this time or am I getting another bad batch? I was so, so sick of dealing with that that I almost gave up on the medium altogether. So I'm I don't know. I'm just it's hard for me to recommend that is, I mean, if someone has them, fine, but it's hard for me to say, yeah, go spend your money on these because you may get an absolutely terrible batch. Whereas you know that the polychromos, they are consistently good. So I would say polychromos. Um, like if I were in your place, that is hands down the, the pencil I would choose just because you know what you're getting. They're consistently good. Um, let's see. Tamara said, are you going to be taking your travel ink tense palette out for a walk again anytime soon? And inspire me to take my own watercolors outside. Actually, yes. And we're supposed to get some nice weather next week. So I'm so hoping that I have time. I've been really, really, really busy um, trying to get up to date on like Patreon postcards I'm almost done with. Um, I've got them all labeled. I'm just the stamps I have to put on now. Um, I've got some oh, so many videos to edit. So I'm trying to get up to date on those. But then I, I really want to get out. We've got really nice weather, hopefully, coming up um, next week. So it's on my to-do list. I just got another GoPro. So I thought that would be fun, a fun thing to take it out for. Mishy said, thank you for the Vince Man GoPro video. <laughs> Made my day. Glad to see he's fitting into your family so nicely. Yes, I love him. He, like, that video or that camera has been so nice because it's convenient like I took a bunch of videos that I'm going to make more um more Instagram stories with and it's just nice because it fits in my purse and it fits in my hand so like if I take it into a store because stores get you can't bring a big camera into a store they're going to be like you can't film here they don't they don't even see it in your hand um if you're you know carrying it around with you it's not obvious that you've got this little teeny thing so i am absolutely loving that one and this one the, the better thing with the new the seven the gopro hero black seven whatever too that name is too long um that one has an image stabilization image stabilizer like built in so you get that kind of gimbal look if you remember to turn it on i didn't remember to turn it on during part of my zoo video but um that will actually give you a really smooth result with this tiny little hand you know camera in your hand so i'm loving it for that Let's see. Daryl said, any tips for finding on finding time to check out Patreon videos? Any tips on finding time to check out Patreon videos? I've been a Patreon for almost a year now and I've only had time to use like five videos. Put them on while you're doing your own artwork. Even if you're not doing the same project as me, there should be tips in there that'll be really helpful that you may be able to apply to that. But other than that, um, set, if you're having time trouble finding time for anything in life, usually my tip, my advice is set a schedule. Um, well, I mean, even with me, I have to set schedules and stuff like that all the time. I don't know if this pencil is going to be the right color. See, I don't even know if the colors are going to be right. You just test it. Grab one, see if it works. But, um, if you can set a schedule and set a part, set time, like from this hour to this hour, even if it's just an hour, even if it's a half an hour, I'm going to sit down and work on art or I'm going to follow along with this tutorial or I'm, you know, if you set a schedule, that is going to make a big difference. If you just wait for time to magically, you know, for you to just have time to do stuff, you're never going to have time. None of us will. Uh, we're all always super busy and you have to set time for the things that you want to do that aren't a part of your normal, like everyday routine. Set a schedule. That's the best thing that you can do if you're having trouble finding time for anything. I mean, it doesn't just have to be Patreon. Anything that you want to get done, set a, um, give yourself a schedule of, even if it's just like, I'm going to sit down for an hour. I'm going to sit down for five minutes. Something. Well, this color is working way better. Marilyn said, what airbrush was it that you love? The Grex. I'm using Grex. If you look up the live stream from last week, that's the one that I used there. And that airbrush, the thing that's so amazing about it is that you can like upgrade needles or, or not upgrade, but like add additional things. So you get one gun. And even if you start with like a three, a point three needle, you can decide, okay, I want a bigger needle or I want a smaller needle. You don't need to go get another gun for that. You just switch out needles within that gun. And I, I'm just so in love with that, that thing. So, um, 
yeah, that one's been a really nice one. I used the Iwata Neo for quite a while. I have a Tamiya. Um, I forget which model it was. It's a, or is, I still have it. It's a, that one has a five needle on it. And it's like, I, if I wanted a different needle, I had to use a different airbrush. Now I can just change that out. So that's really, really nice. Gail said, when drawing animals, do you usually start with the eye? If so, why? Yes, I usually do because that's usually going to be some of the darkest area of the animal. You'll have to be your darkest dark, so it makes it easier to judge your values everywhere else. Now, this one's a little bit different because I'm up against black paper, so everything's a little weird when judging values on this paper. But um, yeah, I like to start there. Plus, another bonus with starting with the eye, the eye is usually one of the first things people are drawn to. It, you know, oh, the eye looks so good. It's the easiest part. The eyes are so much easier than everything else. So if I get that part done, at least I have one little area on my drawing that already looks good. And for me, that's, I don't know, it's kind of like that encouragement of, okay, this part looks good. I can go ahead and finish. The, I can get through those ugly stages on everything else. The eye's so fast to do and so easy to make look good. There are lots of reasons I start there. Um, Diane said, thanks again. Or thanks, Lisa. It makes sense. Alan said, I use graphite pencils and just ordered my first set of colored pencils, a 36 polychromo set and a white luminance. They will be here on Friday. I'm so excited. I'm excited for you. That's it. You got a good start there. Um, Sarah said, I've been trying to get more in depth with my drawings and colored pencil and can't seem to get the leaves to come out right. Any tips on foliage? Yes, slow down. If you're anything like me, and this is a problem that I have a tendency to have, is I want to rush through it. It's like it's leaves. You've got a million leaves. I want to just be able to go, you know, um, pencil stroke, pencil stroke, pencil stroke, done. No, no, slow down, sharpen that pencil. One, you know, if you want it to be super detailed, really break it down and zoom in, do some studies of leaves. I think that helps too. Um, really slow down, do like one leaf. Focus on, throw the pencil on the floor, all the little veins, all the little details, the crinkles in the leaf, everything. Focus on that. Do some studies. And, and I would say do studies on anything that you ever have a hard time with. Let's say you have a hard time, you like to draw buildings and you can't draw windows. That tells you right there, you need to focus on just drawing windows. Do some studies of just windows for a while. Um, you have a hard time with hands or fingers, just focus on hands. Do some smaller things like that. That's going to make it way easier for you to learn than if you were just trying to do the whole thing all at once. So I think that that would, with leaves, just doing some focused ones. Like if you, I don't know if you remember the hummingbird I did, or hummingbirds, there were three hummingbirds on a set of a branch of leaves. I spent more work on the leaves than I did the hummingbirds. You have to slow down. It's easy to look at a, a piece and let's say you're doing something like a flower and it's got leaves on it. You'll put all this work into the flower and you get to the leaves and you're like, okay, it's a leaf just really quick and it's done. Well, no, you have to put just as much time into the, the leaf as you did the flower. So that's often just you need to slow down. Uh, let's see. Fabsum Draws says, do you ever have moments you feel down when your art is not the skill level you wanted it to be when you were younger? Oh, absolutely. But at the same time, like I like to, I, there's advice out there that will tell you don't ever compare your artwork with other artists. And I call bull on that. That is absolutely, I think, some of the worst advice. For me anyway, I improve my work when I compare myself with other artists. I'll find someone whose work that just inspires me and that I want mine to look like that. And instead of being like jealous or feeling down, like I'm Never going to do that. I get encouraged. Okay, okay, I'm pushing harder. I want to reach that. I'm going to push harder and I'm going to figure out what is different between mine and theirs. What do I need to change about mine to get myself to that level? I think comparing your artwork with another artist whose work you like better is one of the best things you can do to push yourself to that next level. If you constantly, that advice of only, you know, only focus on your own work, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if you never want to grow more, yeah, that's great advice. If I want to get better, I'm going to look at someone who's better than me. And to figure out what I need to do to hit that, that skill level, you know, that point. But yeah, I mean, you'll always have moments where you come across an artist and you're thinking like, I'm doing so good, everything's good. And you see someone else and it's so much better than yours. And you're like, I give up. But try not to stay in that. I mean, I think it's a normal thing to have happen. Just don't stay there. Um, keep working until you get yours to look like what that other art, you know, what what it was about theirs that you loved work to figure out how to make yours hit that that's that point uh megan said sorry if i missed anything but what's the conservation board you're using by canson like weight texture i haven't heard of it before if you just go to dicklick.com look up canson conservation board it's a 16 by 20 it's like three dollars and 25 cents or something like that it does not cost very much that's the other thing it's for um the size of paper i was actually pretty impressed with the cost but uh 
I don't have it. I don't like have a UPC number or anything in front of me. That's just what it's called. If you look that up on dickblick.com, you, you should be able to find it. Uh, and of course, I scroll too far. Shocker. If you guys have not already, make sure to check out our moderators' channels. They are listed below in the video description. They help so much, and they've all got channels, and we're encouraging. Valerie, Valerie posts quite often. Joseph, meh, he, he could post some more. Um, and Nick Edgar is just, he said he'd fancy up his channel. He's got, he's got some more videos to post, that's for sure. We'll all give him a hard time on posting more. Uh, let's see. There's Megan. We got that question. Okay, Trish said, why do people feel the need to push Prismacolor pencils on you? <laughs> I don't know. No, I think because they're like so popular here and you have a lot of people's high school teachers especially are like Prismacolor is the best because they used to be and you didn't used to be able to get polychromos or anything else. And so when they said they're the best, well, yeah, compared to like Crayola and the other options that you have when you went into an art supply store. But now we have so many other options. And I think a lot of the teachers that are pushing only using Prismacolor, just haven't used a lot of those yet. And I don't know, that's my theory. I don't know if it's correct, but that I know that a lot of the teachers are constantly pushing that on their students. Like these are the best, you wanna use always use Prismacolor. And so too many people just take their word for that and assume, or maybe it's just because they have them and they like them, which is totally fine. They're just not for me, but that makes me laugh because I know what you mean. Like I all, I wonder that too. Like it, it's fine that you, you like them. I don't, it's okay. Um, Let's see. Hi, I've been drawing forever and I still feel like I can't draw and hopeless. Draw more. When, see, and I have to wonder when you say you've been drawing forever, when you, do you mean like I've been drawing for six months? Cause that's not forever. I've been drawing for two years. Still not forever. I've been, you know how, when you say forever, a lot of times, especially younger people have a tendency to think forever is like nothing when it comes to the scale of how much time you're going to be spending in art. If you've been doing it for 15 years and you're still having problems, you want to find a new method. But if you've only been drawing for a year, two years, that's not forever at all. Um, and one of the things that I, I often tell people, if you are having a hard time drawing, practice tracing things. So let's say you trace something, let's say it's a rose, trace it for 10 times, 12 times, whatever, then freehand it. Then go back and trace it free a few more times. Then freehand it. Go back and forth between tracing and freehanding and that's going to improve your freehanding skills because what you're trying to do is train your brain to see things as they are, not what your brain thinks it, think it looks like because our brains want to take over when they're just wrong. We want to start training it to see what's actually there. And so by tracing things and then freehanding it, it's going to improve your freehanding skills. And the goal is not to forever trace. That I'm not telling people like, oh, just be a, you know, that that's how you're going to do it then. Um, if you're, if somebody can't draw and they trace a project, you can tell that they couldn't draw, but it will help you improve your drawing skills to you. So you get to the point where you can draw. So that would, that's a good, good way to help. Sadina said, what are some good varnishes or sealants you suggest for beginners? I've never tried sealing my stuff myself. Well, it depends on what for. For colored pencils, I don't use any. Um, if you're using Prismacolor, then they make their own sealer. So you may want to try that and that'll help prevent wax bloom once the artwork is done, um, which is a good idea. But for me, because I use luminance and polychromos and even the Derwent, none of those need to be sealed. The only time that I seal colored pencil work now for myself, since I don't use Prismacolor, um, <laughs> cue the, the hate comments. Um, the only time that I use it now is when I use powder blender because that's like, it. it's on the sanded paper so it's kind of powdery and so you want to you, you want to seal that down. But other than that, I don't use any. And then when I do on powder blender, it's from the brush and pencil.com. They're um, the brush and pencil brand of sealer. It's their final fixative. Daryl said, thanks for the advice. I try to schedule, but my work schedule isn't consistent. I'm a photographer and clients don't care when I want to draw. So that makes it hard. Well, I mean, you can schedule, can you sit down and like schedule two or three days in advance? I mean, if you've got photography clients, you should know a little bit in advance when they're coming for a session or you're meeting them for a session. So, you know, you maybe every few days come up with your plan, your schedule. It doesn't have to be like a schedule that you set out for a month in advance. Set it up for a few days in advance and make sure you somehow fit that in. But yeah, I know what you mean when you don't have like a set every day is the same, that does make it harder, but then you're just gonna set a schedule every few days or once a week or something like that. 
Um, let's see. Noriz, Noriz Zerk said, how do I build confidence and improve my art? I've been drawing forever. Okay, I already answered that. Shelby said, what postcards are we up to? I am, cr I just stamped the postcards for July, which should have gone out in August. September, which should have gone out in, no, August that should have gone out in September. And September that goes out in August, so that one's actually not late, that goes out in October. So it's the July, September, October postcards are the ones that I just labeled. And I am really, really, really going to try to have them always on time here, or, you know, sent out on time from here on out. We'll see. But fingers crossed that that all works well. Um, sometimes, well, I just suck at being on time with those, honestly. Shannon says, still waiting for you to get back to a graphite piece. Actually, one of the upcoming things, and I almost did that for tonight, and I was like, no, I'll just do this all in colored pencil. But on another type of, uh, it would be a white paper. I want to do a combination graphite and colored pencil piece. So I'm, it's like parts will be black and white, parts will be in color. So that's definitely coming soon. Uh, let's scroll too far again. Oh my gosh, way too far. Here we go. Uh, Megan said, comparing art to others is like training in music. As you know, we need to listen to the greats. Many musicians, same principle applies to art. Definitely. Definitely. I agree with that. Thanks, Nor 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 Zerks. I'm going to struggle with that one tonight. Sorry. Rich said, is starting realism good for young artists? By the way, I started to do realism and I'm really young. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even you can change to, from any style from there, but being real, the nice thing with realism, even if that's not your end goal, is it's going to teach you to pay attention. To, it gives you control. It gives you a lot of control, I think. And then you can, you can make it more stylized as time goes on but it's harder for someone who only does stylized work like let's say you do cartoons or anime or you know whatever um it's going to be a lot harder for them to switch over to realism not that it can't be done but i mean if you started with realism switching over to another style i just think it's a little bit easier and you can apply a lot of what you learn with realism to those other styles Daryl said, what makes darker backgrounds in graphite gradually building up, going from, say, a 2H, oh, going from a, say, a 2H to an 8B, going up about two shades per layer, going straight to the dark shades. Okay, so if you want a smooth result, you don't want to jump straight into your darkest graphite pencils because what happens is you end up, there. it's a really, really soft lead and it doesn't get into all the little nooks and crannies of the white paper. So those white bits show through and that's where you get that grainy gritty look. If you want a really dark, smooth background, start with, let's say a 2H would be a good place to start because you're going to get it really sharp. Light hand, do not push hard because with graphite, it's a lubricant and you get too much on there and you just kind of polish it. It gets shiny and it just, the way that it builds. So don't don't apply a lot of pressure, but use a super sharp pencil, work in your little circles, little ovals, and make sure that you're getting that graphite into every little nook and cranny and then build maybe from a 2H, then jump to, let's say, a 2B and then a 6B, then your 8B. You know, if you can kind of more slowly build up, and I'm not saying that's the order it has to be, but just giving you an example, um, that's going to give you smoother, darker results. Also, you may want to look into graphite powder, which is my favorite, favorite thing right now. I am in love with that stuff, and that can build really dark really fast. Use that with soft tools blending um, sponges. Those, that, like, I'm in love with using that now for my backgrounds for getting like a dark, dark background with graphite or just even a smooth background very quickly. And I'm using a graphite powder by Generals, I think is the one that I use now. Not because I've tested it a bunch and decided that's the best, that's just the one that I bought and it works. Marjean says, oh gosh, there are so many artists I aspire to be as good as, including you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for keeping me on my toes. Carol said, using the Faber-Castell 9000s and Karen Dosh, by the way, in the graphite question, both of those are excellent pencils. I like the Faber-Castell 9000s a bit better than the Karen Dosh. The Karen Dosh I like better just in that the, the, I love how the wood casings are like the color or the shade. It gives you an idea of which number it is instead of having to, all the pencils look the same and having to read the number because that print is too small. But other than that, the, how the, the pencil lays down the graphite, I love, I think I like the 9000 better, but they're both excellent, excellent pencils. Sidney said, could it be maybe those teachers are unaware of polys and other brand color pencils or brands for a lot of other stuff? I think so, honestly. Um, 
that's what I think it is, is that they're not, you know, that's what was used in the U.S. for so long. And it's like if you ask somebody from pretty much like go anywhere in the U.K. and you're going to get a different answer. Most of them are going to be more familiar with polychromos or luminance or other brands where poly or Prismacolor isn't available out there so widely. So that's, I think, going to be your bigger I, I do think that has a lot to do with it. I don't even know if I'm gonna end up blending much with odorless mineral spirits on this. This is just blending so nicely and giving me really nice results on this. This may be a really good working on black paper because I have people ask me a lot about, well, how, how can I blend it without odorless mineral spirits? And the black paper or a toned paper, it doesn't have to be black, maybe a good, good alternative for someone who wants to avoid using those. I mean, I can still see some of the black bits through, but I'm, I'm liking this. I've used black before, but this one is going to have more lights and whites than my other ones. Carla said, my husband Steve is listening too, and he said, Lisa is a really good teacher, and she is really quite lovable. Oh, thanks. Natalie said, do you get the looming feeling of needing to top your previous work after finishing a really good one? Oh, yes. I've done that, and I have to remind myself uh, to not, because you do one, and you're like, I love the design. I loved everything about this. How am I going to top that? And then I sit around for days and days and days trying to come up with something else to draw. And I don't end up getting painting done. I could have been painting even if it was just like a free an apple, like something simple. I could have gotten that done. But instead, I sat around. It needs to be better. It needs to be like, I need a one up. Like the octopus with his hands going into the jar with a scene under it. That was one where it's like, how do I top that? Like I need something even more creative. Just paint. Just pick up. Just pick something and paint. Actually, I was talking about that a bit, I think, in, in the newsletter that went out today. Like, it's so easy to get caught up on, I need to pick the perfect project. And instead, it would be better just pick something, anything. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just pick something and you'd be better off spending your time. But yes. Oh, my gosh. I so know what you're talking about because I have done that myself a lot. Oops. I had a question from Vladimir and it scrolled past too fast. Uh, here we go. Have you ever used Frederick's canvas pads or the red label? Any thoughts? So the, yes, the red label was the one that I primarily used learning to paint because that's what was available at Michael's. I don't like it as much. It's too rough. So I have some red labels here and you guys have seen me use red, red label on occasion because I got a good deal on them. I just put another coat of gesso and sand them to make them smooth so they're suitable for me. It's not that they're a bad canvas. It's just that I want it to be a smoother surface than what the red label has. It's more of a, like a medium texture. Um, for the Frederick's pads, I find those to be a little bit more smooth than the red label. I think they're supposed to be about the same, but they feel smoother to me. And those are, are really nice to work on. Not as smooth as the blue label ultra smooth or a Belgian linen, but they're still, they're nice. I do like those. Um, let's see. D Friendly said professionals practice until they can't get it wrong. <laughs> yeah. That's a good quote. Um, Rich said, where do you get your reference photos? This one I took myself. Sometimes I get them from wildlifereferencephotos.com. Sometimes I take, like in this case, I took the photo myself. Sometimes I get them from, I have some from Jason Morgan. I have some um, from Pixabay. That's a free site that you can get a lot at. So they're from all over the place. Uh, let's see. Sarah said, I took drawing classes for one se session. I need to buy some colored pencils. The teacher recommended Prismacolor, but I had bought a set of polychromos because of your videos. You got good pencils. Um, Gail said, how do I get the postcard mailing list? I'd love to be added. For the postcards, that's for those on Patreon who are at the $9 or more a month level. Those um, get a, pay a postcard. Well, it's supposed to be every single month, but I'm late half the time. You do get one per month. It just sometimes is several months late, but you will get the ones you were supposed to. But it's from, it's a Patreon one. Daryl said, okay, thanks. Going to try that method of scheduling from next week. Let you know what's going on in the next live stream. Wish you luck. Yeah, good luck with that. Let me know how it goes. The thing is to be consistent, like make yourself every single night. If you if you make a schedule every night or every like Monday, whatever day you make your schedule, make yourself sit down and do it. Like you have to, the consistency of that is the big thing. Um, oh, it scrolled too far again. Dang it. Um, Bryson said, how well do you draw famous buildings? Leaning tower piece. What do you mean how well do you draw? I don't understand the question. Well, I draw really well, so good. 
I don't know how to answer that to you. Um, Daryl said, I bought some graphite powder, the one by Generals, and the sponge is recently off your recommendation, but I'm kind of nervous about using it. Wondering, so I'm working in little circles at the moment. Get a scratch piece of paper and practice with it before you go into your pro project, but you can just slather that stuff on. That you, it, it's pretty hard to really mess that up, but practice on another piece of paper first. Rich said, can I send you my artwork so you can see it? Also, I like hearing people's responses. Post it on our, um, if you're not already in our art group on Facebook, there's a link in the video description, or there should be. If not, just look up Lock Cree Artist Group on Facebook, and you can post there, and then we can see it, or you can use hashtag Lock Cree, um, Live or hashtag Lock Cree on Instagram, and I'll see it that way too. I follow both those hashtags. Um, Sarah makes art says on the topic of comparing, I've studied, studied your time lapse, I can't talk, time lapse videos to help me better figure out how to craft mine. That's awesome. I'm glad if I helped or hopefully I didn't make it harder for you. Um, sometimes I do stupid things in my time lapse and I'm like, wow, I should not, I, I try to tell you guys though, if I made a bad where I'm like, oh, I wasted time there. Or don't do what I just did. Um, let's see. Ursi said, I think the pencil on the paper looks beautifully done at beautiful result. Thank you. Vladimir said, have you ever tried the you Trek? I can't say it. Artist professional heavy bodied acrylics. I have not doing an artist haul and wanted to try new professional brands. I'm trying myself with the budget being $200. No, I've not tried them. One of the main reasons that I typically stick with the Liquitex Basics is that I like the finish and that they dry fairly matte. So that's for me a big deal. Although I do want to try Goldens because I talked to them. I th I've mentioned this a few times and I just never got around to ordering any. But Goldens apparently, they said if you add um, their matte medium, that will make their paint matte. And I'm like, hmm, maybe I'll give it a try because you've got some interesting colors. Okay. Tamara said, thank you for advising me on to make videos and a schedule. I'm feeling I push myself to paint almost daily now to get enough footage. What a perk. Yeah, see, it's great. That It really made a difference for me because I, I need a brighter orange. Do I have a brighter orange? Hold on. Ooh, I do. You are going to be my new best friend, bright orange. That's not really its color, so don't write that down. Um, It's too little for me to read. Let's. Yeah, doing, when I started with the videos, when I, I first signed up with a YouTube network, and one of the first things they told me is to get on a schedule. And I was like, wait, what? They wanted me, they said, at least one video a week, ideally two. I'm like, what? No, what? I barely do one a month. How am I going to do that? But I needed to, I mean, honestly, if that's what I want to do for a living, if I can't do one piece of art a week, there's something going on weird there. Like at least do something small, like something. But um, no, that pushed me. That made all the difference for me because all of a sudden now I get so much more artwork done than I ever had in the past. Okay, so that orange that I just put down, it's too dark against the black. So what I'm gonna do is put the light on top and then put the, the brighter orange, which is a little darker, on top of that. I need to reverse the order I'm doing this and that should lighten it up enough that that orange can stick. Now, these bigger areas, I may end up blending with, yeah, I'll probably end up blending some of this with OMS. Uh, let's see. Megan loving this pelican name. He doesn't have one. You guys haven't named him yet, which is weird. That colored pencil is looking beautiful and smooth on the black conservation board. Yeah, it really is coming out very, very smooth. Now, the color that you're seeing, I will see you guys are look, it looks a little more yellowy in here. It looks a little more orange. The color's a little bit off. Um, so I apologize for that not being the same. But yeah, it's, um, it's coming out really smooth. I'm really, really liking this board. Like I will definitely be ordering more of it for sure. Especially, I mean, the price I think was decent and it's an actual board. I mean, it's a thick, oh, it's bent at the corner. Um, when I'm at it, you won't see that, but it's a board, like an actual, like I don't have to tape it down, which is nice. Um, let's see. Bryson said, I mean, like, do you have experience with drawing those buildings? I think you can make some really nice pieces. I do, um, I drew the Eiffel Tower. I have a video, if you look up my Paris video, you'll see that one. Oh my gosh, I just missed a bunch of questions. Scrolling back. Well, a lot of questions. Yeah, this live stream is way different than last week. Last week kept dumping everyone out of the stream or not notifying people. YouTube was having some serious issues last week. It was awkwardly quiet. I missed you guys. Uh, let's see. Josie said... Or, no, I'm sorry, Joseph said, I wanted to thank you. Your videos really helped me to build my confidence as an artist. Do you have any tips for blending more desaturated colors without it looking speckled or grainy? 
Well, I mean, you're going to build it the same way as anything. Keep your pencil sharp and just those little circle, like, you know, little little ovals, little circles. That is going to help, but you're going to have to build it up. Like right now, let's say if I go fast, I'm not sure if this will show. See how, I don't know if, that, hold on. Let me pull my other camera up and see if that showed. If you, It's grainy. Yeah, you can kind of see that it's a bit grainy here because I went quick. If, and my pencil's not that sharp right now. So what I want to do, let's sharpen that pencil. Now, of course, layering with um, OMS would help. But look at that how I can fill that in. A sharper pencil, smaller circles. Now I'm getting that pencil is getting into the tooth of the paper and that is giving me that smooth look. And it doesn't matter what color, whether you're using neutral colors or whether you're using bright colors, the technique would be the same. Michael said, what do you suggest doing with the white luminance and will you ever come to Hong Kong? I don't travel, my diet, well, okay, between the fibromyalgia, I don't feel well. I cannot even imagine too with arthritis in my back staying on a plane that long. But I don't travel too because the, my diet is so limited. And I, I don't, if I got sick from gluten while traveling, I can't even imagine how much that would suck. So probably not. Um, I mostly just stay home. I'm very boring. Steve Anthony said, have you tried, oh wait, um, what would you suggest doing with the white luminance? Um, what do you mean, what would, would I suggest? I use it for highlights. If, so like, well, I haven't needed to use white yet, but like the highlight on the eye, I could use it there. I'm gonna use it on a few highlights when I get into, it, it's like the brightest highlight. I can also use it on top of the color. So I think you said you got the Prisma or Polychromos and then the white, white luminance. So let's say you're build, doing skin tones. I can use my skin tones. I'll make them a little bit too dark. And if you look at the video I did, it's an older one. It's a little girl um, wearing a crocheted hat in Polychromos and Luminance. And what I did was I did the colors. I used my Polychromos and I made the colors of her skin too dark intentionally and then put the white on top and I got her skin tone that way and used that white to kind of blend that in. And I got this really nice opaque look. But that, that one is a good one, I think, for you to watch because that'll give you an idea of a way that you could use those together for blending. Steve Anthony said, have you tried Strathmore Art Again paper for colored pencils? Art Again? I Art Again. I don't know about art again for paper, but I do know Strathmore makes their colored pencil paper and it sucks bad, so bad. One of the worst papers I've used for colored pencils and I wish they would have actually talked to colored pencil artists before they set it out. It can't handle like OMS well. It warps like crazy, even if you're not using OMS. It doesn't work with half the techniques I use. So no, I, I do not like that paper. It's okay for graphite. But I don't know, when you said Strathmore Art again, I don't know what Art again is. Um, if it's just their Strathmore colored pencil paper, then that I hate. Jaden said, I love to draw, especially with graphite. I'd like to start selling my artwork, but I find it hard to part with after so much effort has been put into it. It's almost sentimental. That gets easier with time. The more you paint and draw, the easier, the easier it is. If you, um, let me see if I'm going off. Oh no, I've got room on that camera. Okay, I can come down a little further on the beak, making sure I'm not going off camera. Um, but the the more you do that I promise it'll get easier but for now I mean keep it don't try to sell it until you've done a few pieces and then it'll be way easier for you to sell the older stuff I do that all the time I mean I have paintings sometimes I do keep them and just like I'm not selling this this is just it's mine I'm keeping it but most of the time I don't make it available for sale right away I'll wait a month I've gotten by then four more paintings done and then now it's easier for me to sell that first one unless someone's super excited and really really wants it um, Desuk said, hey Lisa, I just said that wrong, I'm sure, and I apologize. When I blend my polychromous colored pencil using odorless mineral spirits, Gamsol, the area ends up becoming a bit gray, especially when I use a lot to blend my first, yeah, it will, when it dries, it won't be. It will darken it up, and then when it dries, it should lighten back up. Um, if, if what you're talking about is what I think you are, that just, it should lighten back up, and you should be fine. Um, Levi wants to know how often I stream, normally every Wednesday night. Don, oh, and I scrolled too far. I didn't even see if it was a Donna or a Don. I just got the first half of that out and this page left. Oh, come on. Where did that go? Okay, Donna said, I have to run early, but I'm looking forward to next week's live stream. Thanks. Valencia said, I love drawing, but I'm terrified of beginning to use color, even though I really want to. I'm scared of messing up. How do I start? Use a limited color palette and don't don't like you're already going into this putting too much pressure on yourself so I think that would be step one is stop putting pressure on yourself when you get your first time using color don't even care just play with it 
don't um oh, i'm actually gonna leave this looking a little rough because he needs some texture on this part of his beak that may work to my benefit um but anyway don't be so worked up about it. i'm afraid to mess it up go into it planning your first few pieces i'm gonna mess this up i'm gonna make something ugly and i'm gonna learn from that but also using a limited color palette i think really really helps it's going to make it easier for you to learn to blend and mix colors if you're not using like let's say you get into colored pencils and you get a set of 120 pencils pull out 12 max that you're going to use and that's it that, that's not to say you're not going to use those other pencils eventually, but right now, try to limit that just a little bit. And I think it's going to make it a little bit less overwhelming um, than when you're like, oh my gosh, I have all of these colors of orange. Which one do I use? Build up to that. Start with something a little bit more limited and worry about your values because that matters more than anything else anyway. And go from there. I think that'll make it easier. But the biggest thing is just give your perm yourself permission to make something super ugly and don't even worry about it. Just experiment at first. Heather said, hi, Lisa, long-billed chicken. Ooh, yes, that is what this is, isn't it? A long-billed scoopy-faced chicken or long-billed fishnet chicken? Long-billed, I feel like he needs a little bit more to that. Um, Jenny said, could you remind those requesting to entry into the group to answer the questions? Yes, if you are an, um, asking to join the art group, over on Facebook, if you don't answer the questions, you don't get at it. It just, there's quite like easy questions just to make sure you're gonna fall, you know, answer, yeah, you're gonna follow the rules. Hopefully you read the rules. Um, but if you don't answer the questions, if you just request to join, it's assumed that you're just a spammer and no. So make sure you answer those questions. I had some guy recently kind of went off on what jerks we all were because we didn't uh, let him in. You didn't answer the questions. Do you, like, well, I think it was a pretty good indication that this is not somebody who can follow the rules. I think that's the other assumption. If you don't answer the questions, you're probably not going to follow the rules and you'd probably get kicked out of the group anyway. So yes, answer those questions. Thank you, Jenny. Um, Michi, Michi said his name should be Montgomery. Montgomery long billed, Montgomery long billed fishnet chicken, maybe? Maybe that's too long. Sue Dean said, you're amazing. You do your own cameras. Um, you do your own cameras, watch the chat and do art live, one woman show. Nobody else can do that. A beautiful art too, inspiring. Thank you. Well, I can't take all the credit because without the moderators, which again, you should check out their channels, um, without them, this would be much harder for me. They really do make things way easier for me. Um, Sedina said, would, we would name him Nigel after the Pelican and Finding Nemo. Oh, M Nigel Montgomery long build fishnet chicken it's just getting longer um let's see whoops i need tea one second um it's alejandra said what are your thoughts on the grid method i use it for realism but erase the grid before posting pictures of the process because I'm nervous about people's opinion. I don't know why people get weird about the grid method of all things. Like, I don't know why. I don't care what method you use to create awesome art. I only care that you create awesome art. If you only ever trace, but you're creating awesome art, it's fine by me, it's still your art. It, as long, I mean, as long as you're not just tracing somebody else's art. Um, if you use the grid method, I don't care. If you use erasers, there are people who are like, oh, if you use erasers, you're cheating. Really? Um, if you, God, the things, this, there are people who will set a rule, some stupid rule for just about anything to do with anything under the sun. And honestly, good art is good art. I do not care what methods you use. I don't care how you get to that. And if somebody wants to talk crap to you about, oh, you shouldn't use this method, block them. There's a block feature on social media that's amazing. Learn to use it. I'm good at it. Uh, but yeah, no, if that's the way you're using, who cares? I don't understand why people would be mad about that. I mean, the old masters used versions of our current projectors. They use, grid method has been used for hundreds of years. Like, n this is nothing new. I don't know why people are, okay, maybe not hundreds of years on the grid method, actually. Well, as, as long as photographs have been around. But a version of the grid method has been used for a longer, I guess as we use it today is a bit different. I can't say hundreds of years on that. That would be inaccurate because photos haven't been that. But anyway, um, yeah, no. My attitude is, if you create something awesome, I do not care how you got there. As well, as long as you're not violating somebody else's copyright, but 
I don't know. I never understood why people get all uppity. I think that people, I don't know if it's that they're insecure about their own work. And so they have to set rules like, oh, your work is better. Well, you use the tool I don't use. That's why you're better and why I'm not as good. No, you're not as good because you don't have as much practice as, as the person over here. Like maybe you just need to practice more instead of making up excuses on why they shouldn't use the tools that they're using. It's a tool, nothing more. It doesn't mean your artwork is instantly amazing. It's nothing more than a tool. That's part of the process. It, just as much as the pencil is a part of the tool or using tape to get a straight line. Oh my gosh, you used a ruler to get a straight line. You're cheating. All these things are just stupid. But anyway, there's my rant for the day. Use whatever you need to use to make awesome work. Uh, let's see, Stacy said, where do you buy your open stock pencils? Usually Dick Blick or occasionally Jerry's Artorama, but normally Dick Blick. Although the last time I ordered from them, whoever packed it is fairly incompetent and they were I mean the things that got damaged Dick Blick replaced but uh, they had like pencils all loose and floating all over which is not usual usually they have everything packed like so it's in really really good condition like perfect condition when I get it so that was a little weird but normally Dick Blick I've always had better um, luck with like they do a better job of packing but with any company that you buy from if you ever get something and it's not in perfect condition like if it gets damaged in shipping, just contact them. If it's a good company, they'll replace the item. So it's no big deal. Um, but yeah, those are who I usually order from. Um, KN said, is that conservation board thick enough that it won't warp? I've never seen it. I mean, any board can warp. It. I could sit here and bend it right now. So yeah, it can. But when I put a mat on it and put it in a frame, then that's going to stay flat. Um, when you say warp, like... Now, let's say I used, I wouldn't use this for watercolor or ink tents. Um, I, I don't know how that would work. It's a little bit more smooth than what I would want for either of those mediums. Um, this is is more smooth than like the Fabriano Artistic, or it's more smooth than a hot press watercolor paper. Um, that's a better way to put it. So I don't know that it would be my choice for that, but for pencils, it's perfect. Nick said, I don't like to travel very far either. I can't trust anyone to take care of the dogs. That's the other thing for me. Like when I went to see my parents, my husband had to stay home. Um, he takes a week off his vacation time when I go to stay with my parents for a week so that he can stay home and take care of the dogs. Trisha said, what technique do you recommend for someone who is used to soft colored pencils and is new, new to the harder polychromos? Light layers, sharp pencil, small ovals or circles. I mean, really, it's the same technique I use for anything, but that really, that those lighter layers and, and a really sharp pencil so it gets into the nooks and crannies of the, the tooth of the paper, that way you're going to get that smoother blend. Whoops. Scrolled too far. Again. Hold on. Oh, wow, this really, I missed a bunch of questions. Hold on just a second. I'm trying to find where it last was. Um, okay, Steve said, Artigan paper is their black tone tooth bristle paper. Oh, I've not tried. Wait, have I not tried that? I might have that. I have a bunch of papers behind me and I can never keep track of which one's which. And I have two different black papers that I couldn't find and then I found that I didn't even realize, I forgot I bought this one. So I found this one while looking for the other two, so it might be that, I don't know. I can't give you an opinion on that then. Sabrina said, I tried experimenting, I tried an experiment that is failing miserably and I'm too stubborn to give up doing a large piece on a Frederick's watercolor canvas board using ink tents for the background. Don't, yeah, figure out a way to make it look good because even if you don't like your end result, finish it no matter what. But even if you don't like the end result, you learn from that. If you just give up, you learn nothing other than you, oh, I didn't like this. I'm not going to do certain things again. But you'll learn so much if you keep, um, finish it. Always finish everything, even if it looks absolutely terrible. And sometimes that happens. But if you can figure out how to make it look good, you will learn so much more from that than even if you just made it look good from the beginning. Connie said, when um, when do you use powder blender versus mineral spirits? Do you find, da oh, that just scrolled and now I lost it. Thanks, Tamara, for the super chat. Oops, one second, I lost the question, went away. Here we go. That is so sweet. 
Oh, it actually has a comment that didn't come with it. Here we go now. Love what you do and your advice is priceless. Thank you. Um, let's see. Connie said, when do you use powder blender versus mineral spirits? Do you find days you just can't paint because of your fibro? I deal with fibro too and the fatigue just kills me. Yeah, there are times with the fatigue that it gets me. I'm so strict on my diet, that really does help. Um, and I think with me too, with, when I got on the schedule where I, I was like, I'm sticking to this, I'm having a video go live every single whatever day, you know, um, Wednesday used to be my day. Every single Wednesday I'm having a video go live. That forced me to, but I also hit it by that point, figured out that if I remove certain things from my diet, carbs, sugar, anything artificial, um, including sweeteners, um, even this stevia, stevia sets my fatigue off more than anything. And that's something to watch too. Uh, Cause like I was drinking those by drinks. I found this out last year, those by coconut water drinks. I loved them and that has stevia in it. And I was feeling really nauseated, but the fatigue was just killing me. And I thought it was because I had recently had a bunch, I had three surgeries last year and I thought it, it was after the last surgery that it got really bad. I thought it was just from the surgeries that, you know, okay, it finally made my, my fibro so angry that that's why I'm, I couldn't, I was having a hard time functioning. And um, no, it was, it turned out that my body, I don't know if it's just a fibromyalgia thing. It seems like we're just super sensitive to everything, but yeah, that made a big difference. Like if you can figure out if there are food if there are items in your diet that are making things worse, that will really, really help. But yeah, there are some days that it's just like, you know what? I'm staying in bed and reading all day. This is this is just all I can do. And I think that you have to give your permission to, yourself permission to have those days, but you also have to figure out and work to find out what in your diet you can change because diet makes so much, just such a big difference forever. I mean, it, it really makes a big difference on things. So if you can figure out what that is, what I did, I finally got sick because I was so, I was in bed all the time and I was so sick of that. And I had so much in life that I wanted to accomplish and I wasn't doing that when I was always in bed. And so I did a search on Google, just a Google search, how I cured my fibromyalgia. I'm like, I, mean, I know there's people that did. And I came across the raw vegan diet. Now I'm not raw vegan now, but it boosted me. And I was able to then, like I did raw vegan for three months. And then after that, I was able to just kind of tweak my diet. Okay, if I add this, I don't feel ill. If I add, if I remove this, I, do, I feel better. If I add this, I also feel better. If I add this, I feel worse. Okay, take that out. And you know, just slowly over the years, I figured out what works really well for my system. And um, that that made a difference. Like I, and it's funny because people will tell me, oh, well, I can't do the diet that I do um, with like no carbs, no sugar, no all that stuff. I get some carbs. I get carbs from like fruit. I'll do straight fruit, but not like fruit juice, if that makes sense. But um, you'll have people go, well, I can't do that. Well, when you get sick enough, you can. When you really are just sick of always being sick and tired, you will be desperate enough to go ahead and try those diets, but you have to be in the right frame of mind to stick to it. And it, it can be definitely a challenge, but um, I had to get to the point where I could tell too, because I had a tendency, I'd gotten so used to just being in bed all the time that I had a hard time judging. Okay, am I genuinely feeling like crap today? Or am I just being lazy? And I'd have to ask myself that so that I could balance like, okay, I'm just being lazy. Get up and get some work done. Like I'm always going to feel like crap to an extent. That's just the nature of fibro. But I kind of had to draw a line of, okay, today's a really bad day and I just can't do anything versus today. I'm just being lazy and wanted to finish this book, but I really need to get up and work. So I don't know how much that helps. That's just kind of the things that I had to work through for myself to get myself to this point where I could accomplish the amount of work that I do. Um, but, oh, and then the question of when do you use powder blender versus mineral spirits? Well, in a case like this, this is not a support that can handle powder blender. Powder blender has to be on sanded paper or gessoed paper. That's it. And so if I, like, I'll, I go into a project knowing I want to do powder blender today or this is going to be a mineral spirits project. Um, that's really the decision there. Usually like powder blender, if I want to work large, powder blender because it's going to go faster. Or if I want things to have like super smooth, fuzzy backgrounds, powder blender is going to be my choice in most cases. So that will have, not that it can't be accomplished with mineral spirits, but it's just easier. So those are kind of my, how I decide. Tomorrow said bucket mouth water chicken. Oh, I like that too. That, that's a good one. Bucket mouth water chicken. 
I like that your guys' sense of humor is as weird as mine. Um, Jennifer said, I will totally look forward to seeing your upcoming graphite with colored pencil drawing. Me too. <laughs> I need to design one. I'm excited about it, though. I haven't done it in forever. Gail said, my husband just said his name is Leno because the huge jaw. <laughs> oh, Leno, because the huge jaw. When I read the rest of that, I was able to pronounce it right. Put into context. Okay, Sharon said, I find the luminance easy to use, but many dull colors due to the additives to sustain the light fast quality. Well, I don't know if it's the additives so much as just certain pigments are no are notoriously light fast, you know, or not light fast, so they have to use certain pigments. I don't think it's so much the additives. Um, but yeah, so muted colors, just the, natu the nature of light fast versus not light fast. Muted colors, natural colors tend to be more light fast in general. And so that's why you have a lot of more muted colors with the, the light fast sets. It's hard, like the bright hot pink, not light fast, unfortunately, in any set. Um, and it's just the nature of light fast pigments. Fiddle Jewel says, long build, cutthroated chicken. Oh my gosh, you guys have great names. Uh, let's see. Dezook said, I'm new to acrylic painting and I'm a subscriber to your Patreon account. Where do I start? Pick one. Honestly, pick something that interests you. If you've never painted with acrylic, there is that copper banded butterfly fish. Start with him. He is going to break it down like really the basics. And then after that one, any project you want, jump right in. Even if you're like, oh, this is too advanced for me. No, that's how you learn. Yeah, it's not gonna look the same as mine, but that is how you learn to get more advanced. If you want your work, if you really wanna push yourself forward, if you really wanna advance your work faster, pick advanced projects. If you wanna stay beginner level, always do beginner projects. Um, that, I mean, I, I'll have people who are like, well, your stuff is too advanced for me. Uh, no, that's how you learn is pick something advanced, anything you want. It's, yeah, it's not going to look amazing when you do the stuff that's more advanced when you're first starting. That's just the nature of learning, but you're gonna learn so much faster if you do jump into advanced projects. But whatever interests you the most is the way you wanna go. Um, Rich wants to know how to get accepted in the Facebook group. Make sure you answer the questions. I mean, submit to be in there and then questions should come up that you need to answer um, when you submit your request to join. Daryl said, I think Nigel Montgomery is a good name for him. Yeah, that will be his name name, but his species, we've got we've to pin down that. The long build, oh gosh, you guys had some good names. Um, let's see. Chelsea said, I don't know if you've done one before. Can you do a tutorial on how to mat our own work? I need to because I have a mat cutter. The problem is it involves math. That's the problem. It involves math and me. So I'm really slow at getting it exact because you have to, there, the amount of measuring involved. Um, I need to see if anybody else has made one that's really good and just start linking people to that. If not, I'll have to do mine. Um, I'm really slow when I use the mat cutter, like so slow because of, you know, the math. Not my forte. Ellie said, long build fishing chicken, <laughs> also a good name. Jennifer said, when you, <coughs> when you do colored pencil pieces, do you always use OMS? Almost, either OMS or powder blender. One or the other will almost always be used. On this one, I think I could get away with not needing to, just the like this board and how it's layering. And I don't, I'm not fighting the white because I'm up against the black. So I probably could get away with not using it, but normally yes, or powder blender. Tasha said, how about William? That's a long bill. <laughs> you guys are funny. Jennifer said, have you ever used the Kimberly 9XXX pencil? I have not. And do you think it has much less shine and gets dark really? Well, I've not used it, so I can't give you any advice on that one. I'm sorry. Um, K oh, and it just scroll scrolled past. I had one from KJ. Where did you go? Um... AJ said, hi Lisa, I've been in such an art, a big art slump. I work full time and have been finding it so hard to find the time, energy, and motivation for art. I don't know how to get back in the game. You know, for me, I used to work full time at an animal hospital. And for me, I, that's just what I did when I got home. Um, I didn't watch a lot of TV. I had nights that I watched TV back then, like Alias. If you guys remember that show, I used to love that show. But other than that, I didn't really, you know, I, I tried not to spend time doing that. I tried to spend time, like I came home, I want to relax, I do that at the easel. So that's what I did. Um, and finding a project, something that you're excited about, I think helps maybe try a different medium. Um, let's say you've been using graphite. Okay. Try some water soluble graphite. That may be enough. Like it's so much fun to try something different. That may be the thing that kind of 
get you motivated again. I'm gonna do some dots in here. Dots are great for little detail. <clears throat> Gives you some nice texture. But yeah, I mean, I know it's hard because you get home, you're tired, you're just like, oh, I just want to go sit down. Sit down with a sketchbook. Sit down with, or even if you're going to watch TV, sit down with that sketchbook. That may help. Um, if you can have an art space where you can leave your art supplies out, I think that helps too. Like if you live, if, like I used to draw or paint in my kitchen or my dining area and it's like, okay, now I'm done painting for the day. I want to pack all this up. Instead, I found it, it was still in my dining area, but it was off to the side, left all the stuff out almost all the time. And that made me more likely to just sit down because everything was ready to go. That helped. Sadina said, um, what have been starting to do with new papers or boards is buy one that's smaller or use one page to test all the materials much like bullet journals do helps find what works i like to do see i'm just everybody's gonna be different on this i'm not gonna sit like that's a good way to go too what i usually do i like to do a full project on the board um, like if i'm gonna try something new because i find when i did little color swatches or little things i wasn't getting a good enough feel for is this gonna work when I blend this way? Is it gonna do this when I do that? How is this gonna blend when I do this technique? And I found when I did full projects, it's always been easier for me to judge if it was something that was really gonna work for me. But no, doing that, that would be a valid way to go too. Like I said, everybody's gonna have different ways that they prefer. Get some texture in here on the beak. You wanna watch when you're working on something that has a lot of detail. And this one's nice because I'm working fairly large. Get the texture in there. Don't go, okay, it's an orange beak. Make it all orange. It's going to look flat. You want to layer. Oh, I'm layering all kinds of colors. And I'm using this nice, this one is just kind of this dark, like a burgundy color. I Anytime I'm using orange, I will almost always use a burgundy or magenta with it. But I'm coming through and just getting some of that texture on that beak. And none, nothing, none of this has to have OMS over it. This is blended so, not, like I am absolutely in love with this board right now. This is the same kind of board that I did the airbrush project on, only that was a white, the white version. This is a black version of that. And it's just so like, wow, I'm really liking this. I mean, I knew I liked the colored pencil on that. I just hadn't tried straight colored pencil on it yet. And this is nice. Trisha, uh, that didn't come out right at all. Trisha said, are there any electric sharp pencil sharpeners that you trust enough to sharpen your Kirin Dosh or Polychromos? I normally use my Exacto School Pro and I think I have that listed in the video description, but this one, I got two and one box came damaged and they replaced it. But this is, this is the one that came in the damaged box. So it may have just gotten damaged in shipping, but this one keeps breaking my pencils. And my first one, same model, same everything didn't, but that one, the, the blades got dull. So I, I switched to this one and this one I'm having problems with. So, I mean, I guess I'm at 50, 50 on that one. The first one was great. This one, not so great, but that's what I've been using, um, on and off. I just need to replace that that one the previous one I, I did trust now the electric sharpeners the problem with those is that they have a tendency to sharpen the pencil a little more like i feel like it burns through the pencils a little faster than some of the handheld ones that i have okay sabrina said i found any type of preservative and artificial sugars will put me into a massive fibro flare yeah me too so the same i avoid anything with preservatives and substitute sugars yeah and even like i said the the natural sugars i was having re those were making me even more sick are the natural alternatives like straight sugar doesn't make me feel good but it, i wasn't having like flare-ups from it but the well i don't eat that much of it but or well i don't eat any of it anymore but when i did um but the yeah those like the stevia and was it stevia and then the the gum that has xylitol in it that's like your alternative sweetener for that i can't have that either i was getting really sick um tasha said it might be interesting to see a side-by-side -side demo of two same picture done with different colors as an example of how color names can make no difference in the end result Ooh, i like that that's actually a really good idea but although you know you could do the same thing if you look at like let's go with the patreon challenges um you can have somebody do the same painting i did but use different colors and theirs looks almost the same or oh, sometimes they look better. Um, you guys put more time into yours sometimes than I do. But, and those aren't always the same, obviously not gonna be the same color. So that could even be done as an example, but I kind of like that idea. Um, Michael says, are you going to be trying out and review some of some more watercolor things? I am. 
I um, actually am in, currently talking with Fabric Castell, so maybe I can get them to give me some watercolor pencils too, since you guys have been requesting that. But yeah, definitely. I'm really, really, for how many years I didn't like watercolor, and it's not that they're like, it was just that I, the way I work, I think, changed, and then using ink tints kind of changed um, to my opinion of it, of just slowing down in general um, in the way that I layer it. But I, I definitely am getting more and more interested in watercolor um, all the time. Megan said, I can relate. We need to give ourselves permission to have off days and celebrate the days we can achieve. You are an inspiration. Yeah. Get the, the thank you. But yes, um, be, I think it's good too, to just be excited when you do feel good, like be super that celebrating those days. That's a, that's good, a good way to look at it. It makes it easier too. And I think it also helps to know like this isn't forever. When you have flare ups, it's you're not forever going to feel that bad. And it can you can get fall into depression. If you fall into depression, that's gonna make the flare up worse and last longer. So if you can kind of try to stay as positive as possible, and I know that's easy to say, but if you can stay as positive as possible and look forward to, okay, yeah, I feel like crap right now. First, can I figure out why I feel like crap? Did I eat something that I can avoid in the future? But second, it's not going you will feel better again. I mean you're, we, I think those of us with fibro never feel normal, but we can feel better than those those times we have our flare up. If we can remember that, the big thing, um, the the attitude about it, and just keeping ourselves from getting depressed, which is just so easy to do and way easier to say, don't get depressed. Then obviously you're gonna get depressed when you feel like crap. But it will make it longer the longer you feel down about it. So I think trying to find things to keep your like play mind games with yourself to keep yourself positive, I think will help too. Shannon said, Da Vinci mentioned the camera obscura for the express purpose of saving images to copy from. Yep. Yeah, my conversation, by the way, is always way late because I try to answer everyone's questions. So it's like I'm way behind on that. I apologize. So if you're like, what are you talking about? That was from 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I know. Uh, whoops. Scroll too far. Facebook would, I would save so much time if they didn't have this problem where it would just jump like that. Um, let's see, Gail said, no math for me either. That's why God made calculators, but they are hard too. Yes, they are. Um, Daryl said, ooh, for, for a species, aqua trumpet pelican, pelicanus. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, Stacy said, I have Faber-Castell pencils, but I feel that my Prisma blends way better. What am I doing wrong? I love both. Uh, peas, I'm a dog groomer, but also use art to unwind. Okay. Yes, Prismacolor, they're going to blend, like, especially if you're blending by burnishing, by, like, pushing hard and layering that way, Prismas, excuse me, Prismas are going to blend better because they're waxier um, than Polychromos because they're oil-based. It's a harder pencil. With Polychromos, what I find works better is just more layers, more light layers. You know, the small circles building up that way blends better. But, like, even if I'm going to do a portrait, I don't like Polychromos for portraits. I like them, well, no, wait, let me back that up. I like them for the eyes. I like them for, like, the details around the eyes. I like them for the hair. But when I get into the skin, I switch to my wax-based luminance because the wax base, I like how that blends better for skin. So I use both depending on, you know, what it is that I'm trying to accomplish. Both pencils, both types, wax versus oil, have their, like, strong points and weak points. You just have to figure out what works best for which. Um, let's see. Sadina said there, um, through the screen, the burgundy color you're using looks maroon. Yeah, that, it, it kind of, yeah. That would be a code. I don't even know. I can't read what Karen Dosh writes on these because they're so flipping tiny. So I don't know what color it's actually called. But yeah, um, let's see. I really like that color a lot. Plus, do you feel it's best to start sm small sets to test materials or specific colors? It depends. I mean, if it's in your budget to get bigger sets, I like that. I always like the bigger sets because I'm always going to want more colors. I always feel like there's never enough. But... Yeah, I mean, you can start small. Like, there are a few different brands of paint that I want to try, and I, I'll probably just buy the black and white, test them to see how they blend, how they, you know, that sort of thing. And then if I like them, I can add additional colors. But, um, I mean, it's completely up to you, and it's a lot, well, wait, I should re rephrase that. It's up to your budget, largely. I mean, you're probably not going to want to jump out, run out and buy a ton of, spend a ton of money on certain things if you don't know you're going to like it yet. For me, with art, I know that... 
I will make myself like it. I'll use it until I'm decent at it, at least with pencils. Um, although there have been times that that didn't work out well for me. I mean, I bought the full set of the, what was it? The Derwent co um, Color Soft. I hate it. That was, I'd say it was a waste, but I gave them to my nephew and they're his favorite. He loves his pencils. So, you know, I guess it wasn't a total waste at all. But I mean, for me, I would have been better off in that case to have bought a smaller set to find out that I didn't like Color Soft, that they don't work for how I'm doing. So yeah, the smaller set's probably the wise way to go. But considering the way I do the videos, uh, it works out for me better usually. That was the only time that it didn't work out good for me to get the full set. But I guess it did work out for me because Derwent contacted me and now I work with them on like the ink tense stuff and I've gotten to test a lot of their other pencils that I did like. So um, it wasn't all bad. But yeah, so I'll back that. I'm going to change my mind and say, yeah, I, it's probably a good idea to get a smaller set. But that was the only time that happened. Every other time that I got the full set, I've always been happy I got the full set and you save a little bit of money by getting a full set versus small ones and buying them individually. So I guess it depends on your specific situation. Valencia said, I am confused about Lightfast. I know you explained it in your videos, but I'm confused about what it means. Lightfast, the ratings that we rate the thing, how Lightfast something is, is determines how long it will maintain its color. So let's say something's not Lightfast, like let's a hot pink Prismacolor colored pencil might fade in two years when exposed to light. Whereas a light fast color, like all of these are light fast, so like this light fast, maroon, burgundy, whatever color, that one is going to last 50 to 100 years when exposed to light. So you want to use light fast colors. So when you sell artwork, the person doesn't have it hanging on their wall. And in two years, it's not the same. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like it did when they bought it. So that's what that is. And the ratings on it, all the pencils use um, either blue wool or ASTM. And that's what that's based around. Now, some pencils like the kind of the cheap ones that you see on Amazon a lot, like um, the Marco Refine or all those, those do not even test for light fast. They're super cheap. They're okay for practicing, but they're not light fast at all. So you would not want to do something that you were going to sell with those pencils um, because you would have some angry customers when that did fade. Let's see. Um, sub. Brina said, I love the Exacto School Pro. I thought you could just buy the full replacement blade thingy as one a one-piece replacement. I should look into it. I think I did. Or maybe I looked into something else. I have the worst memory. But I think it costs more to get the replacement or almost the same as just replacing the whole thing. I need to look into that. Or maybe it was just the day I looked because, you know, on Amazon, one day things will be like eight times as much as they normally are. I may have just looked on a bad day. Uh, let's see. Megan said, natural sugar alternatives make me feel awful too. Ick. Yeah, some people do fine with them. Like my husband can have them. I, he has no problems. He tries not to drink them or eat them too much because he's like, oh, if they make some people sick, are they safe? But his body has no problem with it. Um, it, it some of us are just unlucky like that. Uh, let's see. Valerie said, Lisa, next Wednesday is Halloween. Will there be a live? Do you guys, I mean, if you guys are here, I'll be here. I need to know how many of you, I guess. We should find out if you guys are going to be here, if you're going to be, like, watching scary movies. Um, I don't have plans. I don't do anything. But, yeah, that's a good question, Valerie. Um, we'll have to maybe poll in the art group and find out how many people would be there. We can make a poll. Yeah, let's do that. We'll make a poll in the Facebook art group to find out if there would be enough people worth having it for. Um, Brett, oh. I don't scroll too far. Hold on. There we go. Brett said, out of curiosity, what's going to be in the background? It's just kind of little hints of water. Um, it's a really dark. The whole background stays very, very dark. There's not going to be a whole lot of anything. Femme said, you should totally try the stem layer watercolors. They have a great travel set with half pans. The colors are actually luminous. Ooh, I will have to look into that. And now I'm wanting to get my greedy little hands on the test pack of eight sticks of the stem layer oil pastels. Trisha said, I noticed that you hold a bunch of pencils in your other hand while drawing. Is that comfortable? Do your hands get sweaty? No. I mean, I always keep the, the air or the temperature in here is always right around 70 to 74 degrees. So it's not a hot room. Whether it's winter or summer, it's not going to be hot. So no, I don't have any problems with it. And um, Heather said, this Inktober, Inktober has taught me one big thing. I need Inktense blocks. Doing backgrounds with their pencils are nice, but take forever. Yes, you need Inktense blocks. I love, they will save you so much time. Um, Shakat said, we have so many paintbrushes a day. We have so many paintbrushes a day. Each takes 
So many brushes, dishes, what, what? I have no idea what you're saying. I, I, I have no idea what that question is. I'm sorry. Um, Sharon said, exercise regularly helps the fibro and starting with a nice warm bath or shower every day. Statin meds inflames fibro and any allergies inflame it too. I can hardly move and water helps. Yeah, I take baths every night and which I know some people are like, it's a waste of, of water. But I'm like, it's the one thing that makes my back. Well, mine's for the arthritis in the back. I use it. But yeah, the warm baths, those really, really feel amazing with all of that. Um, exercise actually makes my fibro worse. Like I get more exhausted. Exercise is never like I can go on walks if it's not like heavy duty walks, but I, I end up like exercise is always like very much of it makes me feel pretty terrible. Um, most people are like, oh, I get energized when I work out. I'm like, yeah, I have to take a nap now. Um, I don't feel that great after working out at all. I've never under, like, I've always been a little jealous of people who are like, oh, I feel so energized after cardio. And I'm like, what? I feel like I'm going to pass out. And you may think, oh, it's because you have to work up to it. No, I've stuck to things for years and it never got better. I always, like, it just knocks me out. Um, let's see. Trish said I'm trying, but walking makes my back feel better, so I have to do it either way. Um, Trish said if I'm, I'm buying sample, some samples of luminance, which ones do you think are closest to true blue, red, and yellow? Oh, I don't know. And I can't even tell in the light in here, honestly. Um, post that in the art group and some, get, we'll get some people or in the colored pencil podcast. I'm sure we'll get some people to answer right now. The lighting, I wouldn't even be able to look at this and tell, and I can't read this in here anyway. So, but we could find, we'll have to look into that for you. Um, Eric draw said, if I spend eight hours a day on eight hours on my work, what could be my next time mark? 10 hours or more? I don't know why you're eight hours is good. Oh, do you mean? Oh, not in one day. I'm reading that question wrong. I'm sorry. See, you can tell when it's getting towards the end of the night. My brain is just like not firing on all little cylinders. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right way to put that. If I spent eight hours on my work would be the next time mark. Ten hours more. Well, if you're not getting, if you're spending eight hours and it's not as um, detailed as you want, then yeah, jump, jump, it, jump it to ten hours. It doesn't really, I mean, the point is just to do more. Spend more time. If that's two hours, if that's five extra hours, Pick a time and spend more on it. It doesn't, like, there's not a set rule or anything. I kind of wish there was. We need a rule book for art and make, actually, no, I take that back. People try to make rule books and then they turn it into, like, some weird religion and get all uppity when someone does anything outside of their little rule book. So, no, never mind. No rule book. Um, you just are going to figure out what works best for you. Gail says, I never have plans on Halloween. Yes, please do a live. Valerie celebrates Halloween, so no for her. But we can get, we'll, we'll sucker somebody else. If we have enough people that want to do it, we can sucker somebody else, like I said, that sucker somebody else into um, moderating um, for us. So Valerie, you were off the hook next week. You go have fun, whatever we decide to do. Share it. And anytime, honestly, any of the mods, if you can't make it, please do whatever. If you've got anything that sounds like more fun than, than moderating the, the thing, go have fun. Don't, I so appreciate you for helping me, but I also don't want it to get in the way of you doing something that's more fun. Um, so yes, you are definitely not going to be, I, you, Valerie, one way or another, I don't want you here next week. You go celebrate. Um, let's see. Sharon said, give your permission to play. It's not the, the brain surgery. Uh, where was the Sabina said, do you try at least some sketches that help you keep your muscles and joint from walking up swelling? Try to at least do some, oh, stretches. Yeah, stretches help. The more I move, walking is honestly the best thing for me. Um, Trisha said, I thought it was, I was the only one who needed a five hour nap after working out. I'm super jealous of the people who feel energized. Uh, Donna said, your synapses are not snapping. Yes. <laughs> Gail said, please stream next week. We don't do Halloween. Our kids are grown. We live in the sticks. I'll be here. No, and for the moderators, like, I never want you to feel like you have to. I, don't ever do this and, like, be like, I really wish I was doing something. Go do the other thing. If you ever wish you were doing something else, please do that. I appreciate you whenever you do want to join us, but I don't ever want you to feel like you have to or obligated at all. Will I be interrupted by trick-or-treaters? No, I'm on the third floor and I don't answer that door for anyone. It's not safe. Like I'm, I'm super paranoid when it comes to safety things. There will be no opening the door for me for strangers. 
but I'm on in an apartment up high. No one comes over here. And if they did, I'm not answering the door anyway. Yes, Val just got suspended. She was sent off to play. <laughs> so when I'm paying attention to, where are my light oranges? Where are my darks? Because I want to start making this. Like, I've got a base, but right now everything's very flat. So this is where I start working up. And this looks super yellow on your screen. But this is where I want to start um, making everything more three-dimensional, start getting that detail in there. And the other thing to notice, see, I'm just kind of focusing on one area. I'm not just like, I need to put orange where everywhere goes. It's too much. Focus on like one little, like one square inch at a time. Don't, don't jump into trying to do everything at once or you start to lose your detail. You start, you, you don't get as much, it doesn't look as realistic. If you're trying to get something to look really realistic, break it down into small areas and pay attention to those little details. And when you're first starting out, it's really normal if you look at something and you're like, I don't even know how you're noticing those details. That comes with time and with practice. It's normal when you first start to not notice as much. And then the next drawing, you're probably gonna notice more. The next drawing, you notice more. The more you draw and teach your eyes to notice these little details, things like that little line, you'll notice things that you didn't notice before. That that's You just have to practice to get to that. So it's one of those things that's like it doesn't matter how much you conceptually know what to do until you practice it. You, you have to put it into practice to really get good at it. You can study every video, read every book on art, be an expert that way, but if you've not done it, if you've not practiced it, your work's not going, it's not going to do you any good to know all the facts. You have to actually hit the paper or the canvas or whatever it is and practice and try. And that's what's going to get you to start noticing those little details and getting things to look more realistic. Oh, you are up late, Kizzy. You, your out schedule is kind of like mine. Thanks for joining so late. Autumn said, how about a realistic bat for Halloween? You know, I went back and forth on that. If I'm not sure what it'll be because I, I'd like it to be something they call evergreen, something that will be good no matter what time of year it is. But if we do it on Halloween, maybe we could do like a, a full start to finish acrylic painting. Um, something cutesy, like not super realistic so we could actually finish in two hours. I think if we do a stream, it should be maybe... I'm liking that. We may do that. Um, baby pandas, can I show the reference photo that I'm working from? No, because it's not on this computer. But yeah, something Halloween. I mean, even if it's just like a simple pumpkin. Although we just did the Patreon pumpkin, so I don't want to do a pumpkin again. If we do it, I'm thinking it'll be an acrylic that will do start to finish something Halloween. Yeah, let's go ahead and plan. I'm going to be here next. I will be here next week. Let's plan on a, we'll do a special, like a, an acrylic painting so we can finish it the whole time. Something small, something, you know, either fall related or Halloween related, something along those lines. Like that black cat that I did, that it was kind of more of a loose, like stylized, if you remember that one from a couple of years ago, maybe something along those lines. Have I mentioned how much I am loving this paper? Like seriously, this is, I didn't think it was going to be this nice to work on. Of all the papers, the black paper I've worked on, this one so far is my favorite. It's a little bit smoother than the other ones. I think, I wanna say I used Cans and Me Tans and I used a, a, not Stonehenge. What was the other one? I forget what the other one was. A raven or a gravestone? Maybe a great raven. I see, and I have to make sure it's a reference photo. Like I'll have to do either something that I've taken myself. I do have some ra ravens, but they're the uh, not the right kind for Halloween. I don't think um, they have the white on the back. So I don't know if that'd be a fit. But it needs to. I need to have make sure it's a photo that you guys can use too. If you're gonna follow along with me, so it'll probably. I need to look on Pixabay and see what I can find. Yeah, I like the idea too of it being more fall related than Halloween just because that's more like the next day people would still want to paint it like if they didn't weren't there for the live stream. I don't know. But then I also like it being a super Halloween. We'll we'll see. So many decisions. I'm always always indecisive. My husband hates shopping with me because he has to make the choices half the time when I'm like, I don't know if I want this one or this one. Cuz I'll stand there for 2 hours trying to decide.
I am so placing another big order for a bunch of these boards. I, they have a ton of different colors too. I The main reason I got the white one was for airbrushing. Um, I got it, gosh, a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago. I just hadn't used it yet. But now that I know it's so nice on colored pencil, my gosh. Do Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Yeah, that's a little more advanced than what we're gonna finish in two hours. I need it to be something super, super simple, um, really easy so that it can be, I can finish it in that amount of time. I mean, I paint fast, but not that fast. And see how now I'm starting to build these details where I've got a highlight, I've got a shadow. This is the, the stage where I start worrying about all of those things. And these little details of the lights and darks start to really give you that more three-dimensional look. Like right here, it's too straight and I need more yellow. We'll pull that. All of these little teeny tiny details really add up to making it look much better than if you just like, oh, it's orange, make it all orange. And so this goes back to, again, what I was saying in the beginning of the video, where people are like, well, I need to know the exact color. Like, and I understand, like, I know that I'm not judging you for thinking that because I used to think the same thing. If I just knew the right color of orange, this tiger would look realistic. No, I could paint the tiger purple and make him realistic if my values are right. It'll just look like he has purple lighting on him. But um, getting your lights light and if your dark's dark enough, paying attention, where is a highlight versus where is a shadow? That's what matters. Um, let's see, should I take an art course at college? And what are your thoughts? Well, it depends on the college. Some of the art classes are amazing and some are not worth your money. So find out who the teacher is and see if, I don't know. I mean, are there reviews for different college classes that you can look up where people have been like, this is a good one or this is a bad one? I mean, it, it really depends. The art class I took at Chafee College in California, no. Not worth paying for. It was terrible. Unless I needed the credits to go towards like graphic design or something like that, then fine. But as far as wanting to learn something, oh no. That guy, no. That was like 20 something years ago. So it was a very long time ago. I didn't learn, I mean, it wasn't even a class that I learned anything in. I took it one semester and I had the other students in the class coming to me to learn how to do what I was doing because the teacher wasn't teaching anybody. He didn't teach anything. He was like, okay, go paint something that, here's your thing. But you didn't, it, it was not something that you were going to learn anything. It was a very weird, very, don't recommend, or you know, that one I wouldn't have recommended. Now that was so long ago, I'm not saying don't go to Chafee College and take an art class, you, you're gonna have different teachers. But you find out who that teacher is, I would say. I'm gonna go ahead and put my pencils down and stop recording because we are, Finishing up, let's see if I've got a few more questions to answer here. I did not soak or let the blueberry tea sit in my, or steep for as long. It is way better this week. Last week it was way too strong. Gail, you can send me the photo. The thing is, I'm super picky about the reference photo I'll use. So as long as you don't get offended, if I'm like, nah, it's not what I'm looking for. Because even if it's a good photo, I have to, I'm like looking for specific angles to make it work with different things. So um, just don't be mad at me if I if I if it's not what I'm looking for. I have something in my head already position-wise that I would work well for a raven. So I'll probably end up looking through Pixabay. Like it's not something where I just need any raven. I need a specific angle. I need a specific everything to make it how I want. Um... I'm really picky. Caitlin said, and it scrolled too far. Come back, Caitlin. There's at least I'm so jealous of your shoulder chicken. I just adopted an African gray and she won't step up without biting. She talks a lot though. She's nine years old. Yeah, have fun with that. African gray is not, that's a hard one to get used to. They're so smart. They need so much mental stimulation. And if she's already not wanting to step up, you're gonna need a lot of patience. Lots and lots and lots of patience. So just know that going in. And if you've got an expert that you can talk to that can help you, that may be a good way to go. Um, but lots of patience, lots of patience. Um, African greys can be very moody, and I think so much of it is they're so intelligent, so intelligent. And if they are not getting enough mental stimulation, whether it means, you know, playing games and puzzles with her, um, things that, that interest her, she's going to not be that happy. So, um, and especially if she's already starting that, at that point. So look into things that you can like keep her mentally busy all the time, all the time. You basically now have a three-year-old, no, 
African Grey, sorry, you have a five-year-old. Um, congratulations on your new five-year-old, um, but lots of patience. Sharon said, I should have said mild excuses and my, oh, my can't, God, I can't read now. Mild exercise and walking is best for me too. And the nap. Yes, the nap. I have to take a nap every day or I can't function. The nights, like last week for the live stream, I didn't get one. Oh, I felt it. I was having a hard time functioning during that live stream. Sharon said, I, okay, got that one. Trisha said, would you say that making a high highlight lighter is easier or shadow darker. It is almost always going to be easier to make something darker than it is to make things lighter. Sometimes it looks better to do the reverse, but as far as like a generalized thing, it's usually easier to darken something up than it is to lighten it, especially with colored pencil. Daryl said, how about a fall themed forest with maybe shadows that form a face on the trunks when it's not Halloween, people can leave out the faces. It'll just be a forest trunk. Oh, I've got a... I'm going to have to do some planning. Okay, we are definitely doing something either fall or Halloween thing. I know that. I know it's going to be acrylics because I can get that done faster than anything else. Um, you know, so it'll be a one-time thing. It may go a little over two hours. Hopefully it won't. But yeah, I'm going to, I'll do, well, well, oh, that's a good idea too. I'm going to have to do some planning this week. Um, let's see. Diane said, how many layers of colored pencil do you think the board will take? Oh, I don't know, counting wise. I mean, I'd say most of this, I'm like five, six layers, and it's definitely getting to the point where it's fairly smooth, um, like really smooth, because it is so smooth. So it's definitely not gonna take, I wouldn't say as many layers as like the um, Arches hot press watercolor paper or the old Fabriano. The new Fabriano doesn't take as many layers, but the old Fabriano, um, it's more smooth than that, but it's not as like when I've used the Strathmore Bristol Vellum, that one was too smooth and I had a hard time getting the layers the way I wanted. This one I feel like it's a little more than that, but not as much as hot press um, watercolor paper. I don't know how helpful that is. But I don't, I mean, I'm just starting on this and I don't know, we'll see two more when I get into the feathers and into the water. Um, let's see, Akira said, I live in Canada on the East Coast and it would be, would it be worth going to the States for art college? So here's the thing a lot of people don't, I don't know if they don't know or they don't remember. I didn't go to school. I didn't go to college. I mean, besides that one class I told you I took and I didn't, I don't even think I ended up paying for it. But um, it's, I didn't get credit for it because I didn't, I don't think I finished it. Maybe I just dropped it. It was so long ago. I don't remember. I just remember the other students um, didn't, weren't learning either and had to come to me for help. But I don't know. I, what are you going to school for? Are you going to school to be a studio artist? you might want to find a profession, somebody who's teaching a style that you want to learn and be better, learn more that way than just school alone. It depends on the school, completely depends on the school. And it depends on you, how much school you had going in, because you can take two different artists and put them into the same school. And if the one artist either did not already know, you know, certain things to do with art, wasn't as invested with spending the amount of time to practice, they're not going to come out. You're not going to both come out at the same skill level. It depends on the people, it depends on the artist, depends on the teachers, it depends on every, there's so many factors. So I can't say, and I don't know that it, if the colleges in the U.S. would be any better than Canada. I have no idea, honestly. Again, I didn't go to college. Um, I taught myself. So what are your goals? If you want to get into animation, that sort of thing, then yeah, you're going to want to go to school. You need to find a good college that, that focuses on that. So it just depends on that. Um, I don't know. I mean, most of the professional artists I know did not go to college and, and do fine with their career. But I also know of professional artists who did go to college and benefited hugely from it. It, it. it so depends. Um, Gail said, oh my gosh, I took a photo at one and two and the teacher, wait, what? Oh my gosh, I took photo, oh, photo one and two and the teacher was lame. I thought my, the students, I taught the students more than he did. Yeah, unfortunately, it just happens. Um, Stacey wants to know my favorite art book. For colored pencil, it's the Colored Pencil Bible by Aliona Nicholson. Um, I can't remember the name of the other one off the top of my head. I remember Aliona because I'm friends with her now, so it's easy for me to remember her name. But the other, I wasn't when I first got the book, so I super fangirled out when I met her when we started talking because it's like, that's the person who wrote my favorite book. But anyway, um, now she's a good friend of mine. But anyway, she, uh, or what's the other one? There's um, James Gurney, I think it is, that he paints or did a book on light. I think I have that name right. It's over Color and Light, I can't read his name, but across the room it does say Color and Light. And then I forget the other, there's another one for just acrylic painting, I can't remember the name, it's not in here. Um, but those two I can tell you now. 
Um, would you ever consider showing what reference photos you use to help with your pieces? Well, if you're on Patreon, I always let you know where the reference photo came so you can look it up. Um, but no, I mean, I, it depends on where the, the reference photo came from. Sometimes I just don't, if it's wildlifereferencephotos.com, I can't include that in my video. If it's my own, I, I usually include what my final result was because what the reference photo does, one of the things that happens, you'll post the reference photo. Like right now, if I look at the, those of you on Patreon, you have this reference photo from last month. This beak does not look like the reference photo. I like mine better. I changed it. But if I post the reference photo, then on you, because of the nature of YouTube, I get all these people who, oh, it doesn't look like a reference photo. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't do a good job. I like my voice there. Um, but you get that a lot. And it's like, I'm not, I'm not showing, we're not even going there. I will show you my end painting because that's my goal. Um, but no, I don't, I'm not posting the reference photo um, typically. Now, for when we do the live stream next week, whatever reference photos I find for that, since you guys are gonna be following along, that I'm gonna link whenever, as soon as I figure out what our project is going to be, I'm gonna put a link in the video description, like I'll, I'll schedule the live stream, I'll put a link in the video description of where I got that reference photo. I'm probably gonna get it from Wildlife Reference Photos. Or I'll, whatever I do, I'll upload it to Patreon and then put the link, it'll be a free link. Um, you won't have to be a patron to get it. That's probably what I'll do. But I'll, I'll have whatever photo it is, I'll make that available to you. But that's not normally something that I do. Now, again, over on Patreon, I always let you guys know where the photo came from if you want it. Because you guys usually aren't. You want, the, those videos are longer and I can explain why I chose to make it different than the reference photo. So you're not all judgy on it. It doesn't look the same. I know it doesn't look the same. That's on purpose. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's see. Am I all caught up? Well, wait, I just scrolled by one. Thanks, Cersei's. What time is it here? It is 10.06. It is time to wrap this up. What time, um, what will next week's live stream about? Yeah, it's going to be something. It'll be acrylic paints, and it's going to be something either Halloween or fall related, like something seasonal since it's Halloween. Uh, let's see. Ali said, I would love to see you do an inverted tree, tree chicken, a.k.a. bat. An inverted tree chicken, AKA bat. They're superstars all year round, not just Halloween. I love bats too. Um, I haven't d seen you do one before. The problem is finding a good reference photo of one. Um, like, I mean, I can do a cartoony looking one that'll be done in two hours, but I don't think, I don't know if that's something that would really, I'd have to have the right reference photo. Whatever I choose is gonna all come down to finding the right reference photo. One that I legally have rights to share with, with you guys. Like I can't find something on wildlife reference photos because you'd have to buy that too, so. It's all, whatever I do will come down to what good photo I think will work for a two hour project. Uh, what is my favorite colored pencil to use? I like, well, basically the ones listed in the video description. I also love Pro Color, but they're not all light fast, but you could add that to the list. But yeah, Luminance, Polychromos by Faber-Castell. Um, the Derwent Light Fast, I am in love with those. I love the Derwent Pro Color, but again, not all of them are light fast. So that's the only thing I don't like about those. And Derwent Drawing, I love my Derwent Drawing pencils. Um, yeah, I think that's all of them. I use them all together. Uh, let's see, was it Bette Borgeson? No, because I don't know who that is. So Dina said, I like uh, that a lot. That's my personal reason for seeing reference photos is to see how they changed what parts the artist wanted to change why. Totally okay if you don't wish to. Yeah, and like I said, if you're on Patreon, I always let you guys know where the photo was. You can go look it up, but I don't bother on YouTube because then I have to deal with the YouTube commenters who are just looking for, like, there's a weird thing about YouTube. You do get a lot of people, most people, like, you guys are all awesome, but you do get a lot of people who want, who are looking for something to pick you, pick or tear you down for. Like, I don't, I don't know what their problem is, but you have people who are always looking for the negative. And I've had a few on Instagram I've had to block that'll do the same. No matter what I paint, all they do is pick out what they don't like about it. I didn't ask. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed. I've never, never said, hey, what do you think about this painting? You will hear those words come out of my mouth, except for right now, because I don't want to hear what, you, like if it's negative, I don't, I, I don't care. That sounds terrible. And you'll get people go, oh, you're not going to learn if you don't, don't, um, if you don't hear the negatives. I know what the negatives are of my artwork. I promise you when something went wrong, I know it. I am aware of when there's something that I didn't like about it and I'm gonna learn from that and move forward on my next piece. But I, you get a lot of people on YouTube who are just so want to pick out every negative thing and it's like, I'm not, I didn't ask. I never ask you to tell me what you don't like about something. I love, I mean, like anybody, we always love the praise. I love to hear the positive things, but I don't, I don't need, um, 
it do, I don't find it helpful when people just tear things apart. So that's just me. That's we all learn differently. We all all grow differently. And uh, that's that's just me. I don't like the negativity. So because like I said, I know when things don't look good. So I don't need to be told. But um, and some half the time it's just an issue of a difference of opinion. Like somebody will be like, well, I get that. I don't like that color you chose. Okay. I do. That's why I chose it. I don't know why you're telling me this. So it, yeah, when it comes down to the reference body, you get that, that a lot where the person wants to, well, this is different. This is wrong. At least with YouTube. Anyway, um, let's see. Joseph says, you live in Texas. Go get some. Go get some what? I don't know what that question came from. Dang it. See, this is what happens when I'm so behind on these conversations. Mara said, would you say it's harder to get used to technique on black paper than other colors? No, I'm almost saying it's e going to say it's easier because you don't need as many layers. I'm not having to put as much time into blending. So I think this is a little bit easier. This is the downside. Your brights, like my bright oranges are not the same as what that pencil is, not the same color that it would be on white paper. And that's really where your difference is. But it's still... I'm going to say this is going to, the, the black is easier. Um, if somebody is just learning, this is probably going to be a little bit less um, intimidating because you don't need as many layers. And I think when people are learning, that's one of the biggest problems or the biggest challenges is understanding how many layers to get on here. This one, I don't feel the need for as many. So that, that may be right there, a big enough difference. The only real challenge that most people are going to have is that I don't have as many layers. So you'll think, okay, it looks like I've got a lot of, of pigment on there. When I blend with OMS, they expect it to, to blend the same that it would on white that you put. Like maybe I have five layers here. They would expect it to look like what has 15 layers on the white paper when you blend with OMS and it's going to be different. It's just that this didn't need as many layers, but then that also means it's not going to blend the same. I don't know if that makes sense. I may be rambling. I'm definitely, it's me. Of course I'm rambling. Um, Christi, uh, Christian said, are you going to post a video of your red-eyed tree frog that's done in oils? I am. I need to edit it still. I'm really behind on all of that. I've got the hippo and the tree frog. I'm going to try to get done this week. We'll see if that happens. At least the hippo. I'm working on that one right now in Graphy Tint. I'm really behind on editing videos. Morticia said, no, no, it doesn't sound bad. Be realistic. I don't know. This is what happens when I'm behind on the conversation. Is there, I, I apologize. And my brain, again, is fried by this time of the night. Um, Art of Raven D said, well, Lisa, it does suck when we get negative comments when we don't ask. But we do post our art, and as long as we are showing it off, it opens people to say negative things. Yeah, it opens it up, but it doesn't mean I have to respect the people who say the negative things. Yeah, they, they can say it, and I can delete them. Free, free country. Um, but, oh, okay, Mortician, now I understand where you're, I'm caught up on the conversation. That doesn't sound bad. That sounds realistic. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that they can't say negative things. They don't need to. I didn't ask. And uh, you always have people say that. And I, I don't agree with that. The whole, well, you put, put me the video, you put yourself out there. Uh-huh. So that means you get to be a jerk. I don't understand why suddenly, because I put myself out there, you don't have to have manners why do those, why, explain that to me. Um, maybe they just don't have manners. Maybe they just are absolute tools in real life. I don't know. But for some reason, people get the idea. I mean, I had, here's an example. I had one guy once. He was actually, ended up being really cool, but he he made some rude comments. Like it was a really rude comment. I think complaining about my voice and how annoying I was or something like, I don't know, something. And I responded to him and I was like, nice. I was like, well, I'm sorry. You don't like my free content, but whatever. And he was embarrassed. He's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't, you know, I didn't even think of you as reading these. People think that YouTubers are like, I don't know, famous movie stars type thing that the, because movie stars aren't going to go through the forums and read the comments you said, but YouTubers, I don't know. I feel like we're more normal people, not that actors and actresses aren't, but they, you get too many people who feel like they don't have to use manners with us because you put yourself out there. Uh-huh. It doesn't mean you get to, I have to deal with you being a jerk either. That's why I have the block button. So anyway, that's my, my opinion on that. Um, let's see. Whoops. Carla says, I believe that if a person can't say something good, it's best to say nothing at all. If only the world stuck with that rule. Um, let's see. And that is why back to my shameless plug of um, Pinterest. If you're not following me, link in the video description. You don't have as many of that. I've seen that all the time with on Facebook, the nasty comments. It's the political stuff is just driving me up the wall. Um, you don't get that so much on Pinterest, so you should follow me there. Um, 
All right, let's see. All right, Raven D said, all you can do with criticism is take it or leave it. No matter how good good we are, there will always be unhappy poopy pants. <laughs> you are so right. And, and this is the funny thing, and all artists should remember this. Like, I can look at my favorite, favorite artists, like um, John By Fine Art or... Um, God, names are, are going past me right now. But no matter what artist you look at, you're going to have somebody who tells them what they did is it sucks. They're going to tell them what you, that's not real art because you used the airbrush or because you use this, it's not real art. You will always have somebody who says the, this crap. And I don't know why they think like, again, no manners, kind of crazy, but you are so right. Um... Jesse said, I'm going to come to your house, apartment and ask for how to, how, candy at Halloween. Just kidding. I'm not answering the door. You can come all you want. You're going to be sitting out there alone for a while. Art of Raven D said, not saying you have to respect it, but just saying it. Someone get, if someone's going to be an ass, take it or leave it. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I choose to leave it. I delete it. That's kind of my, my thing. Um, I don't just leave it. I delete it. You want to be a jerk? I don't need that negativity here. But I tend to try to be positive anyway, and I'm such a big, it's like so big to me to encourage people and to encourage other artists. So when you see somebody who's just trying to tear someone down, it's like, I have no respect for somebody who does that to somebody else. So that's why they just get deleted. Sadina said, I usually look at the negativity as something that the person has wrong with themselves, um, within themselves. They're trying to make others feel lower or they don't realize that it can sound negative. You are so right. Like I 100% agree with you on that, where it's like something I'll read these comments and it's like you realize that the comment because some of the comments I get not usually about the art it's usually people trying to tear me apart by my voice how I talk whatever they're so nasty now I'm not talking about like genuine like oh maybe you should have painted the moon this color or you know not that I'm talking about the people who are just genuinely nasty and it's like I read those and it's like you realize what you're saying says more about you than it does about me like I don't know why you think you're trying to bring me down because it actually makes you look terrible. Dan said, is the board you use, Dick Blick, only shows this for my search, can send me Tan's board. It's, <sighs> crap, what is it? It's, it says it's their conservation board. And it's funny because when you look through it, if you look through Canson, um, I think it was the Canson Meetan's board. This one was the only one listed, like it was black, and then this one is conservation board black or something like that. This one, it's listed under the same one, but the title is a little bit different on the color of it, if that makes sense. Um, Trish said, what's the name of the Facebook page? Is it Lockree 2? It's Lockree Artist Group. Uh, the link should be in the video description. Um, Gail said, I consider you a friend and I'm always nice to my friends. Have a great week. Thanks, Gail. Okay, well, it is 1017 and I have postcards to stamp because my life this last few days has revolved around 1500 postcards. I have a lot. This is what happens when you get behind. You have 1500 postcards to do all at once. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I will again see you next week for whatever Halloween thing I come up with. And as soon as I get it posted, I'll post it in our art group. I'll post it all over when I get the link of where you can get the reference photo that we'll be using. And whatever reference photo, I will warn you this, whatever reference photo we use, I am not painting a realistic style. It's going to be very much like the black cat with the pumpkins, that very loose, more impressionistic because it needs to be something we can complete in two hours. So um, we'll be focusing on values and on brush strokes basically. So, but I wanna make sure that I have that reference photo for you guys so that you can get it you'll want to draw it out beforehand what I'm going to do on mine I'll probably paint my canvas black because whatever it is it'll be a, a darker color I'm sure I'll, let, I'll I'll give you the instructions on what you want to do to be prepared for next week's live stream how's that and I'll take a photo of whatever mine stage is at before we get started so that'll be available for you sometime this weekend probably and I'll post it again in social media it'll be all over the place letting you know where to find that reference photo and I will see you next week again thank you so much for the moderator's help and make sure to check out their channels they are listed in the video description and Pinterest because you know I'm apparently shamefully just gonna plug that constantly now because I've been having fun with it bye guys buttons work I hit okay why are you